Welcome to this week's edition of the OHSAA Football Playoff Preview Show. Now from Columbus, here's Marty Bannister. The Ohio High School Football Playoffs kicked off last Friday night, and what a night it was. All of the number one seeds moved on. But there were a total of 46 schools that pulled off the upset and went on the road to advance to this week's second round, the OHSAA Regional Quarterfinals. Welcome to this week's edition of the OHSA Playoff Preview Show. I'm your host, Marty Bannister, and thanks for being with us for the next 30 minutes as we set the scene all across the great state of Ohio for this week's playoff games. As we discussed last week, 448 schools qualified for the playoffs once again this season, and now 224 have advanced to play another week in the 52nd annual OHSAA Football Playoffs. Big show coming up for you this week. We'll talk with OHSAA Executive Director Doug Ute and get his thoughts on the playoffs and more. And we'll get reports from around the state of Ohio to set the scene in your region. A reminder that all playoff games are on Friday nights and all games kick at 7 o'clock unless otherwise noted. First, though, let's step aside for these messages from the Ohio High School Athletic Association. When we come back, we'll chat with Doug Ute. This is the OHSAA Football Playoff Preview Show. I just wanted to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. I just want to play. 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 Along the way, I'm learning. Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Teamwork. Teamwork. How to work hard. How to work hard. Discipline. Hustle. Sacrifice. How to be a leader. Dedication. I just want to play. And along the way, I'm learning to put the team before myself. To put the team before myself. How to be a student. How to be a student. I'm learning to set a good example. How to work hard. To accept responsibility. That I represent my community. That I represent my community. I just wanted to play and look where it took me. She's done it! Tiana Bartoleva has done it! From Elyria, Ohio, now an Olympic gold medalist. And welcome back to the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. I'm your host, Marty Bannister. We would like to thank all of our show sponsors, including the OHSA Radio Network, which will broadcast all seven football state championship games live from Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton on November 30th, December 1st, and December 2nd. Tickets are on sale at ohsaa.org slash tickets. We recently caught up with OHSA Executive Director Doug Ute to talk about high school football in Ohio and other OHSAA-related topics. My conversation now with Doug Ute. Exciting time of the year, Doug. High school football playoffs are underway in the state. What is it like for you in your role as an administrator, you've been a coach, you've done so many different things to hit this time of the year in the schedule. Well, it's, it's wonderful because all the work's been done previous to, to tournaments and most of it has been. And so when you get to the playoffs, the tournaments, uh, different things that we're doing, uh, Marty, it's, it, you know, I, I actually said, I get paid for doing this. <laughs> uh, you know, I got a lot of volleyball, some soccer, you know, a lot of football. Uh, really, I, I've hit every state tournament since I've been here. Uh, in, in uh, the previous three years, and, and we'll hit that again this fall at, at some point. And so just love to see that excitement uh, that comes with the, the, the tournament time, the playoff time. And there's something about week 11 in football and week 12 in football that it's not just at, at the school, it's in a community. Mm -hmm. and, and it really, you know, that school's the focal point of any good community. And, and uh, so it's a really exciting time. With all the tournaments going on, and you mentioned the ones you've been to, there's something different about a football Friday night, though, in a tournament, isn't there? It's just oh, special. Yeah, and absolutely. It's, I think maybe it's the, the year's history that, that come with a sport like football, but it's just a special night, isn't it? It, it certainly is, and, and it is. It's just that community, you know, wrapping uh, everything in the week. You see signs, uh, you know, and, and windows downtown, you know, those kind of things. It's almost like a homecoming week every mm -hmm. week of the playoffs. Uh, that, that week and as, as teams advance even further in I think uh, the community rallies behind and then you know in some parts of the state it's not just the community it's the county mm -hmm. uh, kind of rallies around that, that team and, and pushes them so it's great to see. Absolutely. I had a chance a couple weeks back Doug to see you at a sportsmanship uh, conversation that went on for the OHSAA in suburban Columbus and uh, it's a, an issue that I know is near and dear to your heart to make certain that people understand it's just a game. With that in mind 
I know the OHSA, I know you're very big behind this, but you're rolling out a new look at the Respect the Game uh, initiative that you've had a few years back. It's very important to you. Maybe take us through the steps of that and how excited you are yeah, for it's that. Kind of, it's, you know, it's a renewed focus on, on things. Instead of just hearing all the bad things, there are a lot of schools doing a lot of good things, and a lot of great positive environments. And, and Marty, I'll even go back to my days as a school superintendent. Uh, I recognize wholeheartedly that life after three o'clock was so important mm -hmm. to your students and student athletes in your school to be engaged in something after three o'clock. And, and, you know, in some, some communities, uh, you know, the, well, in any community can have this. Sometimes there's a lot of bad going on for that child at home and a lot of stress and those kind of things. So it's very important to keep them engaged after three o'clock. And so many studies have shown uh, that students that are engaged in an activity, a sport, something after three o'clock, uh, perform better in the classroom. And, and so the extension of that is, is the sports piece of this. And, and those positive environments are so important to these students, uh, not just the athletes, but the students uh, that we have. The, uh, there are a lot of kids that enjoy uh, athletic events that don't participate on the team for one reason or another, mm -hmm. but still enjoy that atmosphere of the game. And so, and I always believe this, there are more schools doing the right thing than schools having issues. And so our renewed focus is to share those things that you're doing, uh, to create those positive environments and, and don't just hide them at your school, and, and, but let others see that may be having some trouble. And, and that goes with how we treat our officials, uh, how our students act in the student sections, how our athletes act, how our parents and community act, how our coaches act. Uh, and, and what can we do as a district to provide that positive experience, which, because it is, it's the game, it's for the students. And, that, and so what can we do to enhance that environment and make it a positive uh, uh, event for all of our students and even communities uh, there because no one in a community likes that one loud mouth that's mm -hmm. always yelling and hollering. They just don't want to get involved and say, hey, would you please be quiet, I'm trying to watch this game. And so that falls back on our administrators uh, to make sure that. So it's just, just a renewed focus, but also a proactive approach and to stop waiting till something happens. And, and uh, so, so uh, and we, we've already got a lot of things in uh, from our member schools that we think are positive that, w that are out there for others to see. And I know you being the basketball administrator too, one of your roles with the OHSAA, you've seen that type of atmosphere that you've that you just talked about. So that's a, a great uh, area for you to kind of really drive this home to people because you've seen it firsthand. Yeah, you know, when you're inside, mm -hmm. you know, you really notice it a lot more than, than you do outside, so to speak. And, and so, uh, you know, again, there are just a lot of good schools out, or a lot of schools out there that are being proactive, doing wonderful things, uh, share those out and help others who might be in a little bit more challenging situation on how I can handle, uh, you know, those bad things that happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and again, with the officials, especially with a shortage out there, you know, uh, you want that official leaving and I get those emails. I get emails from officials say, I never want to go back to that school. Mm -hmm. No one introduced himself, uh, locker room was locked, I stood out with parents, you know, those type of things. Mm -hmm. but, but again, then I get some that say, hey, I want to go back there. There's somebody greeted me there. I felt safe to and from my car, felt safe in the locker room, to and from the field, the, the court, you know, those kind of things. And I'd love to go back there. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, trying to share what those schools are doing that are attracting those officials back. With that in mind, is there an official shortage? How are you dealing with it? Is it a concern for you? Yeah. Uh, it's it, a deep concern uh, as, you know, I think I, depending on what you read, it's upper 50s. Average age of an official, I think it's 57 if you look at all the sports uh, nationally. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of the ones who are getting out, uh, we got to make sure that we are bringing, you know, that amount in or more. And so, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the things I think Bo and his staff have done a really good job of is work with Ref Reps, mm -hmm. uh, a company that does that online training. And I always use this story, I ran in a young lady. Uh, uh, from an area of the state that said, hey, I'd like to be a volleyball official, but the only night that they teach that class is Tuesday night, and I have a, a child care issue on that night. My husband works, so I can't, I, mm -hmm. so I can't do it. And we need to remove those type of barriers uh, because I, she'll probably be a really good official. And so in our thing, was, if you can take calculus online, then you, you should be this, able to do right? this. And, and I know there's some field work with, with mm -hmm. officials, and I've not ran in any official or any official association 
that won't do go the extra mile to help those new ones get in and and help train them and those things so that combination and we're, we're now in over 60 schools in Ohio with ref reps uh, and and uh, so you can get licensed in two areas in a semester and we're the only state in the nation right now that uh, working with ref reps Bo and I will uh, work with them to get the industry credential so you get four workforce development credits by taking this class which which is awesome for our, our students Absolutely. And, and, uh, and so you know we're hitting that age but we're also looking at any age and, and trying to really focus on there's a couple areas say you know Marty uh, your, your, your kids are out of school and you used to make hot dogs and you used to sweep the court you used to do everything as a parent at that school and now you see them their kids are gone and, and you're a lost puppy well you want to get involved and, and so I've seen a lot of those type of people that hop into officiating and they're in their 40s mm -hmm. and that's not too late and, and the other area that, that I really like, I ran into a gentleman at state track meet who's 44 year basketball official in the Cleveland area that said, I can't run up and down the court anymore, so I'm gonna do track. I still wanna be around kids. Hmm. Still wanna have an impact on what wow, they're doing. Great. So I'm gonna do track and I'm looking at doing my volleyball license because you don't have to run. And so all those different type of areas uh, we've looked at and try to do, again, the proactive approach to say, hey, how, how do we help them? But, but again, our fans have to understand the number one reason why people are leaving uh, is because of the way they're treated. And, and so, you know, and the pay's not, not that great. They don't do it for the pay. Mm -hmm. It's like the coaches. I, I always told coaches, don't figure out your hourly wage you're getting for this because <laughs> you'll be depressed. It's pennies. Uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, my wife's uh, still a high school volleyball coach, and, and, uh, and she puts in countless hours mm -hmm. of, of, of that so I know what coaches do because I'm former coach and and uh, the officials don't do it for the money either right right as we wrap up our conversation last year of the three-year deal with Canton the OHSA state finals are in Canton right now I know it's been a great relationship and I'll speak from my standpoint and get your thoughts on this as we wrap up uh, I think it's a spectacular facility to hold the OHSA football playoffs I know Stark County loves it. I know Northeast Ohio loves it where are you at as far as looking to the future with the football playoffs uh, we love our relationship uh, not only with the Hall of Fame but with the uh, city of Canton and Stark County. Uh, we feel like our athletes, I always say this, uh, we want our athletes at our state tournaments to get off the bus and say, wow. And I, I say in Canton, you don't get off the bus. You're on 77 and look over. Mm -hmm. Your bus is still moving and you go, wow. Uh, it's a great venue. And, and the folks at Canton really put on a good, good show for our, our, our uh, student athletes and the communities. Uh, and so they know how to do that stuff uh, there. And so. Uh, we want to come back. Uh, the Hall of Fame wants us back. And so we're in discussion right now on how we make that happen. Doug, it's always a pleasure spending time with you. It's the best time of the year, high school football playoffs. Thanks very much. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate all you do. Our thanks to Doug Ute for his time. Now let's allow our local stations to share a few messages from their local sponsors. When we return, we'll hear from broadcasters around the state of Ohio. This is the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. The year was 1907. The Cubs won the World Series and the Ford Model R hit the assembly line. While here in Ohio, school administrators came together to form the Ohio High School Athletic Association. One thing that hasn't changed since 1907 is the dedication of the OHSAA to education-based athletics in Ohio. School sports teach responsibility, sportsmanship, and life lessons that stay with students long after their playing days are over. The OHSAA seeks to prepare students not for the next level of sport, but for the next level of life. You know, I'm a person too. We welcome you back to this week's edition of the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. This Friday night, Spectrum News 1 will televise three first-round games. In Northeast Ohio, it will be Cleveland St. Ignatius at Canton McKinley. In Central Ohio, it's an OCC get-together as Pickering and Central travels to Upper Arlington, while in Southwest Ohio, GCL rivals Archbishop Moeller and St. Xavier get together at St. X. Those are the featured games this week on Spectrum News 1. In addition, 15 games will be streamed live by Spectrum at OHSAA.tv. The NFHS Network will also stream more than 20 playoff games on Friday night. Search Ohio at NFHSNetwork.com for details. 
And now it's time to break down the regional quarterfinals across Ohio and get regional reports from broadcasters. First, let's head to the Toledo area. From Toledo's BCSN, here's Mark Coons. Big store in the Toledo area heading into the district quarterfinals, the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Hello, I'm Mark Coons with BCSN. After losing to league rival Whitmer in Week 7, Jackets turned the tables on the Panthers, winning 2014 with the defense hitting hard all game long to pull off the upset. They're back on the road this week, traveling to second-seeded Olentangy, Berlin. Three teams share the NLL Buckeye crown, but only one is still playing. Anthony Wayne beat start for the second time this year. Generals hosting Avon Lake. South through the Cardinal Division champs won their first playoff game since the state title in 2008. Cougars back at home this week for Olmstead Falls. In Division Three, all eyes on Central Catholic. The Fighting Irish haven't lost since Week One of the 2022 season. A 26-game winning streak after beating BG 42-7 in the first round. Defiance will make the trip west to face the pole champions. And in Division Six, keep an eye on Ottawa Hills. Green Bears' only loss came against Whiteford, a perennial state power in Michigan. The sixth seed in Region 22, first-year head coach Brandon Carter takes his team to Colonel Crawford. I'm Mark Coots, BCSN for the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. Now let's head to the southwest part of the state, and from Cincinnati's WCPO Television, here's Mike Dyer. Well, we're here at the Jerry Faust Athletic Complex behind Moeller High School. 23 Greater Cincinnati teams are still on the road to Canton this week in the regional quarterfinals. The big game, Moeller at St. Xavier in the Division I regional quarterfinal, a rematch of the September 15th game that Moeller won 20-10. Also, some other great matchups in Region 4 this week. Mason plays at number one seed Milford. Remember, Milford number four in the AP poll, and the Eagles are 11-0 for the first time in their program history. Speaking of undefeated, 11-0 Princeton going to host 8-3 Hamilton. The Big Blue won their first playoff game in program history last week, and also Lakota West plays host to Elder. The Firebirds have won nine consecutive games. Division two, Region 8, the big matchup, Winton Woods and Withrow. Withrow has tied a program record with 10 wins this season. Meanwhile, Winton Woods, their three losses are by a combined 15 points. Kings at number one seed Anderson. The Raptors are 10 and one. This is a rematch of the 2022 regional final. Also division three, region 12, Baden is the number one seed for the third consecutive season. They play host to Bellbrook. Division four, region 16, Clinton Massey plays host to McNicholas. And then Wyoming and Taft is a rematch of the 2022 regional final. is a Division IV regional quarterfinal between Bishop Hartley High School and St. Clairsville High School. This tournament is sponsored and conducted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association for its member schools. In order to make this contest as enjoyable as possible, please represent your school community in a positive and respectful manner. That means follow the rules, speak and act responsibly, and show courtesy and respect for your fellow fans, officials, coaches, administrators, and authority figures, and of course, your team and opponent. Let's make this contest great by remembering respect the game. 
The officials for this game have been selected and assigned according to procedures adopted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association Board of Directors. Their experience and integrity qualified them for their important part in this friendly interscholastic contest. The officials are referee Lonnie Freeman, umpire Peter Bloven, linesman Aaron Brockholm, line judge Michael Humer, center judge Alan Russell. Now if you'll please rise, remove your cap in, in honor of our country, the playing of the national anthem under the direction of Mr. David Keesler, the Bishop Hartley Marching Band. Today's highlights are being presented by The Mortgage Captain. Call Todd Utrip at 614-618-3331 to start your home buying journey. By Yamo Sports and Yamo Media. The new app is available next week. Find it on the App Store and Play Store. By Training ABC. Create training courses for your organization. Visit trainingabc.com. Page Tech Limited, virtual live events, multimedia. And by Jenny Osman, proud Hartley alumni from the class of 2000 and your realtor from Core Realty Collection. Ohio High School Athletic Association State Playoffs. My name is Ryan Dietrich. Alongside my partner, Randall Sampson, we are live from historic Jack Ryan Field at Bishop Hartley High School here in Columbus, Ohio. And tonight, the number three seeded 9 and 2 Bishop Hartley Hawks are taking on the number six seeded 9 and 2 St. Clairsville Red Devils in a pretty even matchup. Randall, what are we looking at tonight? Hey, man, this is going to be a great ball game. They have a really uh, elite running back that we got to keep an eye on. Nice-looking kid. Uh, he's only a junior, about five foot eight, five foot nine, about 185 pounds, so he's solid. Uh, so can Hartley's defensive line hold up and uh, put some bodies on that kid, or is he going to uh, wiggle free and go? Because he has some yardage to him, some great touchdowns. Quarterback has thrown some great touchdowns. So they've got an all-around uh, great offense. So now can de uh, Hartley's defense stand up to that? That's right, yeah, and of course you're talking about their running back, Dino Burke, with almost 1,500 yards on the season, averaging like nine and a half yards Ooh. a carry. And here's a good look at the Red Devils making their entrance on to historic Jack Ryan Field here. A good shot. It's Friday night. We're under the lights. It is definitely fall football weather. We've got a great crowd in the house. Um, and let's look at how we got here. Last week, St. Clairsville... Um, taking care of Marion Franklin, 44-12, to 12, um, handled their first-round matchup as expected. And then Bishop Hartley um, advancing through the first round via forfeit. And here we go, the Bishop Hartley Hawks coming on to the field. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how fresh the legs are, if they can churn them. 
um, after the, you know a couple weeks off and what that practice schedule looked like with uh, Coach Birch. But he said it also was a, a really blessing in disguise because they got a lot of time to heal some guys that were dinged up. Yeah, absolutely. That's always, you know, a positive. Um, and so, yeah, we're looking at this is the second round, but Bishop Hartley Hawks playing their first game, like I said, advancing via forfeit over Duncan Falls Philo through the first round. So, some much needed practice, much needed rest. Uh, I should help the Bishop Hartley Hawks here at home tonight, taking on the Red Devils. Yeah, number 15, Winbush, he got a little tweaked up at the end of the season, twisted the ankle in the game, but he fought through it. I mean, the kid's a warrior, so he fought through it. And then they got real thin at the running back. Uh, they got ultra thin at the running back. Uh, uh, number seven went down, twisted his ankle two weeks prior to that. So now we've got about four weeks of, of rest. And a good look at the sidelines here. We're going to throw it to our sideline reporter, Rashawn. And we're live. Bishop Harley, they're fired up. They're fresh out. They didn't have to play last week as they had a forfeit. They had a bye week. So they're fresh. They're ready to go energized. They're about to play St. Carsville. They beat Marion Franklin 44 to 12. It's going to be an interesting one. Fire it up, and I'm ready to go. Back to you, Ryan. All right. Thanks, Rashawn. A good look at the sideline. And we're here just about at kickoff. Bishop Hartley did win the coin toss. They deferred until halftime, and so the Red Devils will look to accept and start the ball with possession here as we make way the 2023 state football playoff second round. Again, live from historic Jack Ryan Field. Just a moment. We'll I'll tell you, I like some Claire's. Uh, I like their unis, a little ice white with the, with the silver helmets, with the red trim. That's nice. That is looking good under the lights here. They are definitely popping on camera. The whistle and the boot. We are underway, folks. Short little kick fielded about the 25. A lot of running room. And the Red Devils look to start this game with excellent field position out to the 38-yard line. Well, what I like to see is uh, that defense getting on the field. You see Denim Cook. Uh, getting on the field first thing he's doing is he's skipping onto the field and you know bad intentions are coming when a man's <laughs> skipping at you You know, they're not coming to play. They're coming to bring some haymakers So let's see what Denim Cook does for us here on the edge. And we got Joey Wooten on the other side And there's number two quarterback Brady Schaefer the junior in the shotgun Burke the running back behind the man in motion Physical football right off the bat, straight up the gut, just a couple of yards on the play. And I like the way St. Clairsville comes out. They're saying, hey, we're going to line up and smack you in the mouth. So what do you got? And then you got a guy over there like Rory coming back and smacking him in the mouth and saying, what do you got? So we're going back and forth in this. Let's see what they do. Yeah, this has football, playoff football written all over it. Two physical teams, two teams that like to run the ball. We are in for a slugfest. So lining up. Second seven out of the shotgun again. A lot of pressure setting up the screen and a lot of room down the right side. The Red Devils making a big play. That's Dino Burke catching a little screen and doing a lot with the yards after the catch there. Gain of about 20 on the play. And that's just a nice little screen setup where they just take advantage of Hartley's aggressiveness. And Hartley has some uh, four guys dropping back, so the guy had a lot of room out there. And that's the guy we're talking about, Dino. He has some moves and speed. Nice tackle there on the back end. And here's a look at the Red Devil starter, like we mentioned. Brady Schaefer, Marcus Bush, and Dino Burke make up the backfield. The big offensive line, Galloway, Fogel, Patron, Adams, and Toothman. Definitely paving the way for the man. And you saw the leading wide receiver. That's Cole Tho Thoburn. All right, Anna, here's a quick look at the Bishop Hartley starting defense. You know the big boys up front. There we are. Malik Tufts, Donovan Davis, Brendan Larratt, Denham Cook, Roy Ralston, Joey Zhang. And then that stout backfield led by Donovan Tucker in free safety. Ooh, you better look in the middle. If anybody's watching this game all game long, here's the matchup. Number 63, Fogel, against Donovan in the middle. 
the pit bull. They were going at it, rolling on top of each other, at each other's necks. All right, nice little pocket for Schaefer. He's got his man down the left side. And there he is right on cue, Cole Thoburn, the senior wide receiver, getting in the end zone, getting the Red Devils up early on the board. And that's part of that rest that you have to worry about. We're laid off on that corner. We're getting a little peeking inside and not looking back at our guy. We're running man to man, but we're playing zone. And so I think it was just a mix up in the call there. But they have a really good quarterback that can deliver. And this is what we're talking about. They got a great running game, but a quarterback that's poised, that can really put a ball on it on a rope and make them pay for it. Yeah, and that looked like Stokes hitting his man, beat him on the edge. All right, flag on the play. And sometimes you get a little bit of confusion in there because um, you got the, the DB. He's standing there looking at the quarterback, thinking it's zone. So he's just zoning him out as a one-third zone. But the defense is called man-to-man, -man, so you got you to look at your guy and run with your guy instead of looking at the quarterback. Yep, just that little hesitation. Thoburn went right by him. All right, after the false start penalty, we'll move it back five. The extra point. And it's good. Knocking it through. That is McKenna Booth, the senior kicker. All right, 7 nothing. St. Clair Red Devils. And there's Coach Birchfield rallying the troops. And you can see the man right there pumping his hands a little bit. That was Bryson Winbush. You know, don't panic. Don't panic. It's all good. Yeah, and that's what, that's what happens, right? When you get good leaders out there, those kids all know they've been in these situations before. It's early. Um, you got an elite offense that can really move the ball, but your defense has to buckle down. And uh, in these kind of championship games, that defense has to show up. Yeah, Bishop Hartley, and that's what they're looking to do right here is just a nice, smooth, long drive, eat up some clock. That way they can make some of the adjustments on defense. Look at what just happened in that previous drive so they don't get right back out there right away, you know. Yeah, and I like to see, you know, what, what's this offense going to bring out? Are they going to bring that methodical offense that you're talking about, you know, their bread and butter? Or are they going to stretch the field, open it up, get some passes going? It's, it's a good evening for that. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, you know, minimal wind yep. for a November day in, in playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. You can open it up and throw it tonight. We'll see what they're afforded. Red Devils. Booth, little squib kick just to Poocher. Oh, and he gets blasted. That was uh, with that kick didn't go 10 yards, I don't think. We'll have to see what the flags are on the play. And this is the poise that I like about Donovan Tucker because he's been on the other end of this, right? Yep. And so he's learned from it. Uh, and being a smart football player, what I love about him is his football IQ, the ability to make a fair catch on a pooch knowing you can't be touched. All right, personal foul on the play. Here's a good look at the replay. Great shot from the sideline. You can see it, quick hand. He, he, I didn't even notice it. That's how quick it was. Heads up play, like you said, by Tucker. Great field position to start the game for the Hawks offense. Here at the Red Devils, 38. Gaelic under center in motion. Jet sweep around the left end. Looks like no gain on the play. Yeah, and I like the way Wimbush is running. Uh, last time he was a little gimped up two weeks ago. But just seeing him stretching out on that sweep, that lets me know that he has ability to cut off of that ankle. And you mentioned it, Bryson Winbush. A good look at the Hartley offense here, led by Matt Gaelic. And, of course, Lathan and Ralston in the back end. And then the big boys up front with bread and butter, as we always know. My second 10 again up the middle. That looks like Ralston on the carry. No gain on the play. All right, good look at the Red Devils defense here. The starting 11. You've got the big squad up front, Saunders, Bush, Adams, and Rankin. And then the cornerbacks to look for, Cole Thoburn, who just scored playing both sides. All right, third down and 10. Bishop Hartley needs to get something going. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Gaelic's got his man wide open. 
And a big catch for the first down on the play. Bishop Hartley and Gaelic stood in the pocket and took a huge hit. Yeah, and this kid has some poise to him. Um, and this has been all season long as he's building towards this. Uh, and this is one of the things that we talk about. You know, over time, can I pull the fake out and have the poise to sit in that pocket, take the lick, but find the open guy and get that first down? Yeah, Ryan Perry on the catch. Great play call there as Bishop Hartley picks up the first down. First and 10 from the 17. Toss left, cuts back a little bit, but that Red Devils defense was swarming in the backfield for a loss of three on the play. And this is a defense that Hartley hasn't seen yet. They are hyper aggressive. So now you're going to have to really work on some play action, slowing them down a little bit, put some window dressing up um, to kind of get them thinking rather than just reacting. And getting these plays called in, Hartley's taking their time just to kind of get set up. Little adjustment here. Gaelic under center. And off left side once again. And met in the backfield. That looked like senior linebacker Brennan Stout, number 34, getting in on the play. There he is. The senior Stout definitely making an impact early here in this first drive. And they're swarming about eight people to the ball. Uh, and I think Hartley's going to adjust to that because uh, you have to run some play action off of that, just like they got the first down on that play action. So they're almost daring Hartley to pass the ball, and they're packing the inside uh, tremendously. And you see our guards are pulling, but their guys are falling right down the line with us, and they're just swarming. All right, brings up a long third and 12 for the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Gaelic and shotgun. Three wide outs. Fakes the handoff and just a little stumble there. Putting it into the stomach of Robert Lathan and just closed on it, drops the snap, drops the handoff, excuse me, fourth and 15. And I think this is a little RPO right here where it was a run pass option and he was just reading too much instead of reacting. Uh, he had a guy, Winbush was wide open in the flat. So he get, if he gets that out to him, he's popping at least 15 yards on that. Yeah, little, little slow on the decision there and we'll see what, Coach Birchfield is thinking fourth and 15. Offense is still on the field. <clears throat> All right, Gaelic under center. A bunch formation, one wide receiver to the right. In motion. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Good coverage by the Devils. And a nice throwing catch, but unfortunately, he's going to come up short of the line to gain there. Winbush just a few yards short. I think they just ran out of time in real estate. Yeah, they ran out of real estate there, but the, the good thing about that is you get a completion. You might be short. It's better than taking a sack, so now you're another 10 yards back, and you gained about 12 yards on that, so it's almost like a short little pooch punt. Yep. Yeah, pins the Devils. The Red Devils at their own 16, it looks like, here first and 10. Looks like Schaefer's out of the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the right. And this is the matchup I want to see over there at number 76 over top of the center. Up the middle. A lot of room to run for Bush there on first down as he gains about seven yards on the play. And when we talk about game of inches, Donovan, Tuck, Don, Donovan Davis was just a half a step from having a five-yard tackle for a loss. I mean, he's right in the backfield, comes right through, gets his hand out, and just misses him. Good work by the Red Devils front line, clearing out some space. Bring up a second and two. Schaefer checks to the sideline, gets the play. Two wide receivers to the right. You know, again, met in the middle. That looked like Tufts getting in on the play. You can see the young man's pumped up. Big stop there on second down. And what Hartley's doing is Hartley's middle uh, nose guard's getting sucked up by three blocks, and it's freeing up a lot of guys one-on-one. -on -one. And every time Hartley has a one-on-one -on -one battle, they can whip the other guy. So I think that's a, that's a great game plan by the defense, just to kind of suck up two or three uh, offensive linemen. Great play there by Malik Tuff. Just forced his way through the man. Shut it down, third and two. Out of the shotgun, Schaefer hands it off. Quick little run to the right. It's going to be school, Gavin Schoolcraft. 
Good little scoot to the right side for a first down. It seems like there's a little hold up in the action. They're not moving the sticks at all. Maybe just a late signal. Yeah, they haven't moved the chains on the far sideline. You can see it on cam, they're running a little late. Not sure what the miscommunication yeah. is there, but. And I'll tell you, St. Clairsville's uh, offensive line is, is fairly athletic. So they're a great matchup for Hartley. So this is going to be a battle uh, royale there in the middle. That's playoff football at its finest. First and 10, Red Devils. In motion. Schaefer drops. Pocket collapses. Sack ball is loose. Bishop Hartley acting like they got it. And that's the junkyard dog. That's the junkyard dog. <laughs> Number 76, Donovan. I told you guys that's the matchup we want to see all night. All right, waiting for a signal. I saw a late flag come into that pile. It certainly looks like Bishop Hartley was recovering it. Well, a Hartley kid got up with the ball. Now the officials are trying to confer what happened. And, and the yeah. ball's clearly out. Donovan goes in and strips it. Uh, instead of trying to scoop and score in the middle of a pile, you just got to jump on that ball if you're Hartley guy. But down in the bottom of that scrum, you see guys are just jumping in on it. They're twisting ankles. And there we go. It's a Bishop Hartley football. Donovan Davis on the forced fumble. We'll wait to see who it was covered by. But the signal is Bishop Hartley taking over after the turnover. So here's the, the challenge for Hartley. Okay, they've got two, they called two penalties on the play, dead ball on Donovan Davis, and then they called another dead ball personal foul on somebody on the Red Devils. The referees might cut out. Well, they're moving Hartley back pretty, pretty far. It looks like it was two personal fouls Ooh. on Hartley. Nice. So it matched up to be two 30 yard, uh, well, one 30 yard penalty in total. They didn't explain why, but they're, they're, the crowd's not happy. Obviously, the coaches won't be happy on Hartley's side. Well, Donovan did take his helmet off on the field. I don't know if that applies to high school football. All right. It does. It does. So taking a helmet off on the field is a no-no, but the St. Clairsville guy had his helmet off, too, and that's walking a, off the field as well. So, And I don't know if that was a result of the pileup. Either way, first and 10, Bishop Hartley in motion. Handoff up the middle. Robert Lathan, nothing doing, stuffed again at the line, maybe a loss of two on the play. And this is, this is probably the time when Hartley needs to start stretching out some of that speed, right? Uh, run a post corner behind those DBs and linebackers that are so aggressive. You got to slow them down a little bit because they're just shooting gaps and going and uh, daring Hartley to throw the ball. Yeah, just bulldozed right by Zach Parker there, right up the middle. Need a little bit better run block. Second 12. Handoff right up the middle, it looks like. Ralston. And then when you need a few yards, just right up the gut, a little quick handoff. Plows his way forward. No, oh, excuse me, that was Joey Zhang in on the play. Yeah, that's Big Zhang going at it, and that's what you kind of need. You just need somebody to give you a little bit of pace changer, uh, get in the middle, start getting those tough yards, and set up the next couple plays. Because you don't want to be behind the chains like this third and seven. Yep, thir third and seven is what they're facing. Gaelic under center. Zang in motion, toss left. Robert Lathan cuts it back and gets to the 45. We'll see if he's got enough for the first down. Well, it was a bad spot. It was a bad spot, but I think that, uh, that second effort Bulldozed him around and, and he kind of banged around and pushed and uh, he got spotted short of it. He's about 
a yard past the line, but they spotted him at the or before the line. He's a yard past the line. They spotted him a yard before the line. Yeah, you can see that. His hips were laying on the 45-yard line. Either way, fourth and one. Here we go. Power eye formation. Gaelic under center. And usually Hartley likes to come to the boundary on this, so let's see if they'll go to the open side, depending on what the defense is showing them. They're making some adjustments. Full motion ahead. Robert Latham for the first down. Yeah, and they came to the boundary on that side. They took what the defensive gave them, and they just needed that extra yard. And I love it when a guy's in four-point stance. That means I'm coming at you like a Mack truck for business number 16, and they're going all the way to the sidelines over there giving him the business. Yeah, that's awesome. Just no bones about it. He's blocking. Here we go. First and 10. Ox with the ball just in cross midfield. This game's a lot more physical than I expected it to be on both sides. A lot of chippiness, some penalties uh, to show it. In motion, toss left. Got some room up the left side. And Winbush just catches the out-of-bounds line up the 38-yard line. Gain a six on the play. Nice little toss left. Yeah, the Coyote comes right here into your screen. He just needed about a half a yard. As he gets around there, he just couldn't. His momentum just carried him out. Well, you just mentioned it. They need to utilize some of their speed, and there we go. Coach Birchfield trying a few different things here. You got to stretch that defense out. Let them go side to side instead of just bulldozing up the middle. Yep. All right, Gaelic under center. A little hand And there and goes the Coyote! Woo! What a play call there. Touchdown, Bishop Hartley. Double handoff there, comes one way. Winbush with the counter and just hits that speed right up the middle. And that's the thing with the Coyote. You got to let him touch the ball about 15 times, and he is so dangerous on that double handoff in the middle because he can just <laughs> slither his way right through, open those teeth up, and then he stretches them legs, and he's gone. Great play design there. Stood the Red Devils defense up, froze him one way, and he finds a seam. And that's elite advantage. blocking out there on the edge by Brandon Lorette. I mean, it was amazing. Number 86, he just came out and smacked that guy right in the side of the helmet, uh, ear hole to, to face mask, and drove him out. And that's what popped him. That extra point is good from Connor Bjornsson. A tied up at all sevens. Just under a minute 30 remaining here in the first quarter of action. Friday night playoff football. This is what we want, folks. So you replace the, the, the silver helmets with, with gold helmets and just kind of swap it around. This looks like a Hartley versus Watterson type of game, a CCL hard knocks game in between the, the, the tackles and the trenches kind of game, and both teams respecting each other kind of game. Absolutely, and that's, you know, that's the type of ball that St. Clairsville plays. They've been handling their opponents making the journey from the east side of the state. Hey, yeah, and you're I'm, not eight and two for no reason. That's nine and two. Yeah. Nine and two, I'm sorry, you're not nine and two for no reason. I mean, nine wins in a season, that's, that's amazing. And winning is very difficult, it's not easy. You don't find winning in, in Cracker Jack boxes. <laughs> All right, Bjornsson with the kickoff. Down the right sideline, return throw Bjorn. Nice, well fielded by the Hartley Hawks. The Red Devils will start the possession at the 31. Let's take a good look at the replay here. Some nice coverage from the special team squad. It's a great tackle on the play. And that's uh, senior Julian Elliott getting after it and uh, making sure that his guy, usually in those kind of open field tackles, you want to hit him high because if you go for the legs and he leaps over you or you miss the legs, uh, you're cooked. So he kind of want to go chest to chest, make sure you get the guy down to the ground. So here it is. You've got the junkyard dog in the middle. He is the focal point of this defense today. Let's see what happens. The Devils on first and 10. Dino Burks makes a great tackle break. Gain of about 11 yards. We do have a flag on the play just at the end. And we've got 
We got two flags thrown in the same direction, so it looks like there's going to be either some kind of a, a holding or a face mask going on. All right, let's go to the referee. Five yard face mask. Good eyes, Randall. Yeah, I think he just got him inadvertently here at the end. When he lowers his head like that and you're trying to take him on, and your hand just slides over his face mask. Oh, yeah. That's tough. Yeah, ref's just standing right there. But, man, great run by Burks there, shifting his way up the middle. Some nice I, moves to find a lane. I like the uh, ultra-thick sideburns on the ref there, man. I mean, he's going old school. Glad you said something. <laughs> Schaefer in the shotgun. Red Devils first and 10. Burks again. Met in the backfield. And driven back. There we go. Big number eight. Denim Cook getting in. They call that man the beast. Denim Cook. Well, just watch and he'll show you why. Yeah, and he fights off really well. And I love seeing Donovan Davis there in the middle. Squeeze him back. Closing the hole up. And just feeding the linebackers. And they're really trying to take advantage of, of, of Junkyard Dog in the middle with his speed. So they're running these traps to kind of get him off track. But he's doing a good job squeezing back, playing under control, and really reading the defense instead of flying around and making sure. the holes bigger. And it makes it tough on the linebackers. So just squeeze down everything and funnel it out to the linebackers. And then it's time to eat. you got to have some patience, kind of hold his spot right there. All right, timeout, St. Clairsville with just four seconds remaining. Must have got a little confusion there on the field. Yeah, something happened there. Uh, you got to think four seconds, you kind of let it run down a little bit unless they uh, were underneath the play clock or underneath the, the game field clock, so. Yep, no hurry. Take a breather, good shot of the Bishop Hartley squad right here. Coach Birchfield in the middle. Giving him some boys, some pointers. And it looks like we're going to have second and 11. And I'll tell you what, I like the new technology that these coaches are all using, right? So he got the earbuds in. And so you don't know if he's listening to his favorite music track to kind of get him <laughs> pumped up as the game's going. Because you kind of see him take the, the headphones out, yeah. little uh, uh, Apple ear pod things, whatever they call them, right? But it's just the wireless technology now. So he can talk directly up to the booth. That's right. Get a lot of good information from his crew. All right, here we go. Second 11. Schaefer and shotgun from their own 48. Drops back. Good pressure by the Hartley Hawks. Good coverage. And they call that a coverage sack. And that's that coverage sack, and you're putting pressure in the middle, and guess who's at the bottom of the pile? J-Y-D. Coming at him. <laughs> and he does not stop. This dude is relentless, and he's at that bottom of the pile yep. grabbing, pulling, tugging, and he's just a nasty on your ankles as a dog just chewing on his bone. All right, now to bring us to the end of the first quarter, all tied here from Jack Ryan Field. We'll be back in just a moment. Today's highlights are being presented by the Mortgage Captain. Call Todd Utrip at 614-618-3331 to start your home buying journey. By Yamo Sports and Yamo Media. The new app is available next week. Find it on the App Store and Play Store. By Training ABC. Create training courses for your organization. Visit trainingabc.com. Page Tech Limited. Virtual live events multimedia. And by Jenny Osmond. Proud Hartley alumni from the class of 2000 and your realtor from Core Realty Collection. <laughs> Don't miss out on your chance to own an original piece of the hardwood from the Bishop Hartley Gymnasium. Visit bishophartley.org slash history on the hardwood or scan the QR code to learn more about owning your piece of Hartley history. Now back to you guys in the booth. Oh, hey, man. There, there you go, Randall. Can yeah. you get your own chunk of hardwood, man? Absolutely. The that, look, that is the court that Dick Geyer coached on, the legendary Hall of Fame coach in basketball and in football. Nobody does it better in the state of Ohio than that guy. All right, here we go. Third and 13. Red Devils starting out the second quarter. A lot of pressure from the Hawks. He escapes. 
He got away, but then was chased down again. And as it looked, as he was sacked from behind, looks like the ball came out, but I believe he was down by contact. Hartley got excited there, thought they might have had a turnover on the play. Here's a look at the replay. And that's what you want from Hartley. You want a four-man rush that can get to the ball, right? Yep. So once you get a four-man rush, you got Donovan back there, and then you have number 30 uh, as a senior, Charlie McCall, coming. And they knocked each other off of the sack because it's two dogs going after a bone and then gnawing after this bone and then knocking each other off of the bone to get to the sack. <laughs> All right, long fourth down, fourth and 19. Red Devils coming out to punt. Then a big boot here. Fielded by Ryan Perry. And we're going to take a quick look down at the sideline to our reporter, Rashawn. All right, so as we've seen during the game, there's been a couple little tufts, a little bit of rough, just a little bit of fighting, and it caused some flags. Some of the players got mad. Coach Burfield's like, calm down, let's play our own game, and let's get focused, refocused, and win this game. As you can see, it's 7-7, seven and seven, and it's a close one. None but defense on this game. Back to you, Ryan. Good look there from Rashawn on the sidelines. As the Hawks have got first and 10. Fakes the handoff, nice crosser to Ryan Perry there across the 40 yard line, big first down on the play. And that's the thing that Hartley's gonna say to you, right? If you wanna be aggressive with your linebackers and creep everybody up in the box on the play action, boom, we're gonna hit a, a quick little cross right behind you and this guy's gonna look like Maserati Marv. <laughs> <laughs> little, play, little play action, freeze the defense, nice completion. First and 10 from the 40 yard line. Gaelic under center. Brings the receivers in. Got a bunch formation. In motion, fakes the toff. Counter up the middle, and there we go again. And a little stiff arming and fighting his way to the sidelines. Bryce That's the coyote. Wimbush. The coyote, he got through and actually jumped over a little pile right there, right? Just a little stutter step. And hey, let me hop over. Clear out some room here, see what's going on. Get out in the green grass if I can eat a little bit. Man, able to stay on his feet, able to get another couple of yards. But unfortunately, flag on the play. Let's see, big number 66. Yeah, Blake White, and you can see it right there in the middle. Just a little out of position. Yep, you get yourself out of position, you didn't get your hips around fast yeah. enough. So now you're reaching with your arm. That arm just <laughs> slid outside. It only takes a couple inches for that arm to slide outside on that pad, and they'll call holding on that. <laughs> all right, all tied, seven to seven here. Gaelic under center. First and 20 after the penalty, that's Perry again. Nice little move at the sideline. Steps out of bounds. And Perry is the kid that's a big target for you. So he's uh, six foot, uh, about two, uh, I'm sorry, he's six foot and about 185 pounds. So he's a really big target as a wide receiver out there sitting in the flat. So it basically becomes just like a little swing pass for you and letting him make a move on that guy. And he just tiptoed on that right foot out of bounds to cut back in. All right, third and 13. Let's see if they can regain some traction here. All right, split out left side, top of the screen. Number two, Fidel Samoja down low. Perry and Winbush. Well, they yeah. reset it to, to second, and, second and 13 oh, there. Me. Second, 13. Right. There we go. Mm. Oh, yeah, maybe a gain of a yard on the play. Trying a little screen there to get some of those yards after the catch. Good, good coverage by the Red Devils there. But you can see the play calling and the design is what Hartley wants. They want to go vertical. We could stretch the field a little bit, but then we want to go horizontal. We don't want this team to come running straight at us. Yep. Rory Ralston coming on the field as we now face third and 12 from the 38-yard line. Three ride receivers, Gaelic and Lathan. Nice counter, Lathan up the middle. He's got a little room and he's pushing his way all the way to the line. First down marker. Let's check the spot. So this is the, the second bad spot again where he lands way across the 50, 
and they mark him down right before the 50. So now we're going to look at uh, fourth, and, fourth and half a yard now. Yeah, another tough spot for the Hawks here on their home field. Ain't no worries. Fourth and one, Coach Birchfield has got to play for this. Straight up the gut. There he is again, and he's got a hole. Robert Lathan Jr. at the 10-yard line. And we got a flag on the play as the Red Devils were able to track, track him down and tackled at the goal line. And we'll see what the flag is on the play. Well, the, the Hartley sideline got a little excited once he broke loose. So they're like, hey, our guy is gone on fourth and inches, right? Our elite running back is gone. He's got some room. So everybody's rushing towards the sideline, and the official's trying to run down the sideline, and he tossed the flag and said, you're, you're way too close. And there's a good look at the replay, fourth and one. There you go. And just below the screen. But, yeah, he gets tracked down there at the five-yard line. So we'll have first and four from the four-yard line. <laughs> All right, a little chaos here. First and four. Trying basically the same play, but the Red Devils sniffed it out. That goal line defense standing strong. Yeah, and that's what Hartley does. They have that triple stack in there. They get their, their uh, double beef. Uh, so you get Donovan Davis in there as a fullback and let him just go. The triple stack. You get the beef. Triple stack of beef. Triple stack That's of beef, right. man. You can get that at a restaurant right here at Bishop Hartley. <laughs> All right, second and five. Let's see what they got on the play. The Red Devils a little fired up after that commotion. Here we go. Toss right. Robert Lathan Jr. again to the pylon over a body. Touchdown, Bishop Hartley. Look, I'm going to tell you, that has to be the nastiest run I've seen all season long. And it's not because of the running back, it's because of the blocking. Watch Rory coming around here, number 43. He just lays the guy out and says, hey, we're going to make a business decision here. It's either you're going to be part of the turf, or I'm going to keep driving <laughs> you into the turf. What do you want? Here's another good look from our sideline cam, and look at that big row of bodies up there. And you got to love that. As you're roaring, Rory's kind of telling him, hey, son, come on. I got more for you. Let's go. Yeah, led by the three gray jerseys. That blocking front sealed it for him. Lathan gets the job done. On for the extra point. Connor Bjornsson. It's up. It's good. 14 to 7. Bishop Hartley leads with 8.33 remaining in the second. Well, 14 to 7, and this is what Hartley wanted. They wanted to control the tempo of the game, control the pace of the game, and really be in control of the offense and figure it out because Sinclair, I mean, they were just coming at them like bulldogs in the, in the beginning, right? Yep. Uh, so it was just all in their face. And Hartley's offense was able to calm down and say, hey, look, let's spread them out a little bit. Let's go vertical and let's get some sweeps and go horizontal and make them change directions. Yep, good adjustments from the Bishop Hartley Hawks offense. Now let's see what they've got on the defensive side. <laughs> Coach Birchfield making sure to keep his boys on the sideline. We don't need a repeat of what just happened there. You know what, every time I see Birch with the, with the headphones in, and I'm thinking, what kind of theme music has he got going on? What's his walk-up music? <laughs> so I'm thinking like Tony Soprano, right? When oh. Tony Soprano's rolling around town at the intro, <laughs> you know, a little blue moon rising going yep. on. That's Birch. That's Birch all day long. You know, can, he gets in his pickup truck here at Hartley. He's just a good old guy that kind of does that stuff. All right, fielded by the Red Devils at the 10 yard line. Hawks on the coverage. He slips through. Gage Wolf getting on the loose across the 40 yard line to about the 42. Great return by the Red Devils there. And that's the thing with the Red Devils you got to respect their speed. They are so athletic. Uh, they have athletes at every position, unlike some of the teams that you see all year long. You might have a guy here, a guy there. They have athletes at every position, including the five along the front line. So that's what you have to respect, the athleticism and speed. And, yeah, the, the Hawks are too disciplined on special teams to be giving up that kind of return. Birchfield giving his assistance a little earful. Here we go, first and ten. 
Out to the right side, just across the line of scrimmage, gain a two on the play. There he is again, Dino Burks, Red Devils feeding their featured back. And one of the things that this Hartley defense has, they have this thing called the dog switch, okay? So they take on the attitude of Donovan Davis. Sometimes they get kind of melancholy, just relax, but when Donovan Davis amps it up a little bit more, the defense around them feeds off of it, and they amp it up, and then they amp it up even more. So they feed off of it. So it would be interesting to see how far they take it on this dog switch when they, when they flip it. Second seven, Schaefer there getting the call from the sideline. Burks on his right, Brennan Stout the tight end, 34 there on his left. Out of the shotgun. Drops back, looks to his right, quick throw and catch. Nice little read there from the Red Devils. Gain of 10 yards, good for a first down on the play. And that's his featured wide receiver, Thoburn. The 5'10 senior, nice route run in there by the senior. And I like how St. Clairsville, they're very methodical. They're not going to panic. They'll run their plays, and they actually are slowing down the tempo of the offense because that Hartley defense is on a tempo and a motor and a pace. So they're trying to slow them down as well. Yeah, that works both ways, running the tempo, you know, offense and defense. There we go, Dino Burks up the middle on first and 10. Met inside. That's Charlie McCall again, the senior number 30, making the tackle on the play. And that's the thing that Hartley uh, was trying to focus on is how do we stop Dino? Because uh, he's, a, he's a really good running back. He's got a lot of speed, a lot of moves, um, and he wiggles free. So you have to stop this running game and start to get them to get on the perimeter so you can start getting some sacks or at least some pressure at the most. Yeah, the junior running back, like I mentioned, almost 1,500 yards on the season and averaging nine and a half yards a carry. The guy can get it done. Fakes back, looks to his left. Incomplete pass. Good coverage by the Hartley Hawks secondary. Woo-wee. Oh. And number 40, I do believe I heard him scream all the way up here in the box. He yelled, <laughs> Mama! Because he was reaching up to make that catch. And number eight is barreling 6'4", 230 pounds of a beast yep. coming at him. Yep, you don't want that. And yeah, just a little high on the pass there from Schaefer. Leaves his man hanging out to dry with Denim Cook coming right at him. Good stop by the Hawks. Brings up third and nine for the Red Devils. Just about seven minutes left here before halftime. The Hawks crowd getting loud, giving their defense some energy. And they go to the man, Burks, up the middle, dragging bodies with him, but comes up just a few yards short of the first down. We'll bring up fourth and three. And that was actually a great play call because now you're always in that middle zone. You know, can I get three yards? Can I get four yards? So we're going to get three yards. Can I get four yards? Now it puts me into a position to where I can make a, uh, a different kind of play call, right? But you have a linebacker sitting right there in the middle as Rory just takes that kid on head on. Yeah, and we've got an injury timeout on the field. That's Dino Burks running back there, staying down after the hit. As you can see, prayer circles up on both sides for yeah. him. As the training staff attends to him. Well, and that's the old Oklahoma drill that we used to do, right? Yep. So you have a guy going one-on-one -on -one with another guy. So you practice this stuff. Yep. How do you tackle? How do you wrap up? How do you even take the hit and absorb it as the running back so you don't get hurt? But you're going full speed so fast towards each other. And I just saw in the middle of that pile, it was just Dino and Rory, two elite athletes going at it right at each other head-to-head. -head. And I just think it got a little coll uh, collision going there. So hopefully the kid is okay. Um, we have some good trainers that are attending to him right now. And uh, these guys are all on knees giving prayers uh, the way it should be. Yeah, we were hoping to get through with an injury-free evening. Unfortunately, the nature of football is the way it goes. So hopefully we can get him checked out and we'll get back to it. As we've just got about seven minutes remaining here in yeah. the second quarter from Jack Ryan Field and Burks is up on his feet, getting carried off. Yeah. Yeah, he's put no pressure on that right leg. So he must have twisted an ankle trying to accelerate. Um, but it's tough to see that caliber of a kid going yep. out in a game like this. 
Yep, yeah, tough to see him exit on the sidelines, a little hopping over there, but the Red Devils will rally. Their fans who have traveled and made the trip are gonna get their team a-going. And stepping in to back him up, looks like gonna be Gavin Schoolcraft, number 10 right there, filling in on the big fourth and three, met at the line of scrimmage, shut down by the Bishop Hartley Hawks. And it'll be a turnover on downs. Hartley takes over. And that Hartley defense stayed disciplined. They've seen this call before, the screen, uh, in this kind of down, because they're taking advantage of Hartley's blitz. But Hartley's defense is right there to make the tackle. And there's that man again, Rory. He's all over the field. Yep, Hart Hawks defense sniffed out that little screen, stayed patient, and they take over on down. It's going to be first and 10 from the 39-yard line. Six and a half to play. Hartley's going to look to eat up the rest of this clock and just march the ball on down into the halftime and look to put another touchdown up on the board. All right, Gaelic out of the shotgun. In motion. Lathan left side across the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a gain of two yards. Robert Lathan Jr. on the carry. And that's one of those runs where you got to keep that defense honest, right? So you kind of pound the middle, pound the middle. So those are those body blows that you just got to keep giving. And it allows your offensive linemen to give body blows to those defensive linemen and really put the pressure on them. All right, Gaelic looks to the side, looks to the sideline, checks his call sheet, gets under center. Winbush comes back in in the slot. Lathan in the backfield. Perry in motion. Toss to the right. Winbush missed the block. Gets blown up in the backfield for a loss of five on the play. And you can see Winbush there shaking his head. Just missed his man. And that's what I like about their defense. Once they commit, they commit. Those guys fly to the ball. Uh, first half, they had eight to the ball. These guys, they just fly right to the ball. Good open field tackle. You go low on the guy, get to his legs, and wrap him up and bring him down. Yeah, Gavin Schoolcraft, number 10 for the Red Devils there. Just kind of shook Winbush. Stepped right beside him. And Blue Perry up in the backfield. We're going to have a long third down. Third and 14. Clock slowly ticking away. And as a, what's that kid, a junior at 5'8", 170 pounds. So that's a good-looking uh, athlete out there on the perimeter. Out of the shotgun. Robert Lathan up the middle again. Just across the 35 and 36-yard line. No urgency here from the Hawks. Going to bring up a long fourth down. I think they elected to run the ball there, keep that clock going. I think that's kind of part of it, getting to halftime here with their lead still going. Well, it's like, you know, the old Dick Geyer and, and the old uh, Jim Trestle kind of football where the punt is the most important play of the game and the most essential play. So we're going to see how this field position, ball control, yep. can we get a clean punt? Can we flip the field uh, versus shanking it? Fourth and 12. Oh. It's a big boot way over the head of the Red Devils, bouncing down to the 20-yard line. Hawks bounce all the way down to the 17. Good special teams effort there. Number six getting in on the punt. All right, we're going to go down to the sideline to our reporter, Roshan. As we just saw, junior running back Dino Burke for Clarysville just went down. He is the key factor to Clarysville offense. He, run, he ran over 100, 114, 1,400 yards, average 140 per game rushing yards, and has 24 touchdowns. That is a huge loss to Clarysville View, and I hope they'll get him back soon. But uh, other than that, Bishop, Bishop Harley can take a huge advantage on this, and we'll see what happens in the rest of the game as we go to halftime. Back to you, Ryan. All right, thanks, Rashawn. With the update from the sideline, as the Red Devils, first and 10 goes nowhere. Second and 10, just inside the four-minute mark here in the second quarter. Pay for looking the sideline, and yeah, in the backfield is going to be number 10, Gavin Schoolcraft, the junior right there, filling in for his man. Yeah, and he's a good-looking athlete as well. I mean, you saw him make that play on the corner, so he has speed, uh, agility. But I think this is what Hartley says now. Okay, we're going to put the, the, the ball in the hands of the quarterback. Let's see if they can throw us, beat us throwing the ball. Picked off. Oh. You almost called it. 
What an effort there by the Bishop Hawks secondary. I thought that's who that was, Donovan Tucker, one of the leaders of this defensive fraction. <laughs> you can see it. Man, I had that. Yeah, Look, hey, great pass, pass breakup, though, by the man. Donovan Tucker was ready to go with the Dion in the end zone, and he was ready to go, and he was, you know, <laughs> he was seeing a pick six before he could even get the ball secure. But that's the honey badger back there. He plays that honey badger position, and he just, you know, it's a no-fly zone for him. As he does it well, third and ten, Red Devils. As the Hartley crowd gets loud. Great fake counter up the middle, Schoolcraft. Shimmy shake a little bit up to about the 20-yard line. Still going to be well short of the first down, though. R Rory Ralston right there holding that fist up. Good defense by the Hawks. That was a good fake by Schaefer. Pump fakes a little bit right, gave his man a big hole to run through. Yeah. But we'll see it on the replay here. Well, Hartley's we'll defense is just back. so fast. I mean, the hole's so big, and then all of a sudden you see yep. three or four or five guys oh. just coming at you. Uh, teeth are snarling, snots falling out of their helmets, and they're just coming like <laughs> mad dogs. And you're like, man, where did these guys come from? That'll bring up a fourth and eight. We've got a quick timeout on the field as the Red Devils are going to look to kind of gather themselves. Imagine they got to bring out the punt squad here. Yeah, and that's part of the gamesmanship, right? So, uh, like Dick Geyer says, you got to flip the field. Punt's the greatest uh, play in the game. So, here's Hartley. They were back at the 30, punting the ball. Pin them deep now. Uh, they haven't moved past the 20. You put them inside the 20, they haven't moved past the 20. So, if they punt it back to you, and at minimum, you're fair catching it at your own 45. So, now you just made 15-yard gain uh, moving forward. So, and if you get five-yard return on it, everything is just butter on top of that. Yeah, you said it. Ryan Perry's lined up. He's moving it, creeping up to the midfield line. As we get back to punt, Red Devils are set. Big high boot from Drew Gasper there. Lands about the 48-yard line. Recovered by Slank Clairsville. And they're arguing that it hit a Bishop Hartley player and that the Red Devils were covered. They think they've got the ball. And it's signaled that way. St. Clairsville Red Devils recover on the special teams mix up from the Hartley Hawks return team. And that's hard because the ball is up in the air and your guy is blocking. The ball hits behind him and it bounces forward and hits him in the leg. There's no way you're seeing that at all. There's a good look at the replay. You can see Perry telling his guys to get out of the way, but it just about lands on. Oh, 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 oh. What do we have here? We don't have replay in high school, but that ball did not hit his leg. It just hit the ground. Here's a good look right here. It, it hit the ground. Yeah. It did not hit him. It landed like a, a nine iron shot on the golf course. Yikes, and that was Harry Reed, number 32, the junior. On the block team, either way, it's Red Devils ball, first and 10. Bishop Hartley defense shuts it down, a cane of about four on the play. That's a great open field tackle once again. Uh, you got Wooten there and you got uh, Rory coming to clean it up. All right, now, Schoolcraft in the backfield. Now, can they take advantage of the situation? They, they basically just had a, a free 30-yard play. Right. So can we take advantage of it? And will they go deep? They haven't gone deep yet. They went once, and it was a touchdown on the outside. So let's see if they test Hartley again. Schaefer in the shotgun. Hands it off to Schoolcraft. Met at the line of scrimmage by the swarming Hartley defense. No gain on the play. And there's J-Y-D in the middle. And the best part about that is, hey, I'm going to make the tackle, sit down, cross my arms, uh, relax a little bit, take my time getting up. And he just sucks up that whole middle. And you run in there, it's like running into the Bermuda Triangle. Nothing gets out. Third and six for the Red Devils here. There's Thoburn, junior wide receiver at the far side of the screen. Schaefer getting a signal. And he's in the back, backfield with Schoolcraft. And then number 32, that's Max Fogel, the tight end slash running back. So filling in back there a little bit, almost acting like a fullback. Couldn't quite make a decision. Head coach Brett McLean for the Red Devils calls a timeout. Here with 121 remaining 
in the second quarter. Third and six from the Hartley 46 yard line. This is a pretty important drive for the Red Devils here. They're down seven, they've got a good chance to score, maybe get a field goal, you know. Yeah. Shrink this lead down a little bit before half. And I don't know what kind of leg their field goal kicker has, but it seems like they, they wanted to run the clock down, don't give Hartley enough time, and just go ahead and if you get the first down, great. If you don't get it, now you can punt it, get Hartley pinned back at about the 10, and let him go 90 yards in, in uh, under 90 seconds and see if they can do it. Yeah, I only see two field goals attempted by Parker Galloway from the kicking squad. Aside from that, McKenna Booth handles all the PATs. So odds are we won't see the field goal unit. Red Devils playing that field position battle. Port third and six, 121 left. Well, you got the wide receiver on the island out there, so you can't have a slip tackle. And they run a little reverse here to Thoburn with the speed. A lot of Hawks in the backfield, a loss of five on the play. Is that Ooh. Ryan Perry on the side? That's number That's 16. That's the X-Man. Martin Fuller getting it done. That is the X-Man with all that speed. Now, you got a, a speedy guy coming around on this reverse. And usually it's one of your fastest guys. The X-Man just comes slashing through. But what people don't understand is this dude translates track speed to football speed. He is a legit 4'6", four, 4'5", four, kind of guy. And on the track, he blazes, and it all transfers to football. That's why when you're at Hartley, they get all these guys out on the track. They run indoor track. They run outdoor track. They do summer track, and then they go to summer camps, and they just blaze it up. Yeah, Xavier Martin Fuller. Big come up on the play there. He was 15 yards deep in the secondary when he saw that reverse going around. All right, we're gonna have a timeout on the play. Birchfield looks a little frustrated out there. I'm not sure with what, but the Red Devils are facing fourth and 10 from midfield. 53 seconds left. Birchfield's calling a timeout. Wait to see what the Red Devils are bringing at him. And while we're waiting, usually we do this, uh, you know, uh, when it gets close to half, but it'll be interesting to see how many Hawk fans or, or people out there watching. What is the furthest location that people are watching the game tonight? All right. Watching the Hawks soar here before halftime. Let's see what is the furthest location either in the United States of America or outside. So type it into the comments, your location, city, and state. And let's see what people do. We like, have an exciting one here too tonight. So hopefully people are still watching and, and clinched on to this one. Well, and that's the beauty of this is, you know, all the fans and family members out in St. Clairsville can, you know, tune in. Don't have to make it, you know, drive 100 miles on. However, that's, you know, that's the fun part of fall football playoffs, right? Yeah, grandma, grandpa don't want to drive to the big city of Columbus and, they can uh, get logged in at home and, and watch yeah. it there. Or, you know, uh, the dad Ooh. that has a kid playing. <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. Just right before snap, Birchfield called another timeout. They got it off, but take another quick second here. So they're resetting the clock to about 53 seconds, trying to get everything set up. And uh, like I said, you know, you have uh, the dad that maybe works that second shift or third shift that can't make it to his kid's game. Now he has the, the game right there on his phone, so he can at least watch it at when he's taking a break from work or uh, he's in the lunchroom, uh, you know, at least catch a little bit of the game. So I think that's the advantage of the technology and the ability to support your kid from afar. Definitely. Fourth and 10, Red Devils. Big boom and punt, fair catch at the 16-yard line by, it's, it's not Perry back there, Joey Wooten. Wooten back there returning. And that was close. He had to go down on one knee to fair catch. It was like, ooh, that's a little close for comfort. Yeah, it's not always as easy as it looks. Good concentration there by Joey Wooten, though. Bishop Hartley taking over here with 47 seconds left here in the second quarter. One final drive going to bring up first and 10. So you got to go 85 yards to score, zero timeouts. You blew all three of them in a row uh, on that fourth down situation. 
So do you just run the clock out here, or do you really try to press it? Gaelic under center. In motion, the pump fake again. Handoff up the middle. The pile lunges forward for a gain of about five yards on the play. Clock continues to run. On there, no rush. So it looks like yep. they're just going to try to run the clock out. If they pop one, great. If they don't, let's just uh, take it into halftime. That's right. Gaelic looks to the sidelines. Now taking their time, this ought to be the last play. All right, Gaelic under center. Right up the middle, Robert Lathan again falls forward to about the first yard line. And that'll do it for the first half here. From his. All right, reset the chains, run the clock, and there we go. That'll do it for the first half here from historic Jack Ryan Field. The Bishop Hartley Hawks lead the St. Clairsville Red Devils 14-7. to It's a great first half. We will be back in just a few moments here on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Sports. Hi, I'm Doug Ute, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. For more than 115 years, the OHSAA has promoted school sports as an important part of the student's educational experience. Interscholastic athletics teach participants lifelong lessons of hard work, teamwork, and self-discipline, along with sportsmanship, integrity, getting along with others, and overcoming adversity. One thing the pandemic has taught us is that being on a team with our friends is more important than ever before. So as you continue your journey in athletics, remember the importance of also working hard in the classroom. Always give your best, never give up, and have fun while you're doing it. As an Ohio native and former athlete who learned these same lessons myself, I encourage our young people to focus on your academics so that you can continue the privilege of participating on your team. After all, the lessons that school sports teach us today will prepare you for the wins and losses in life tomorrow. Education is the key to life's successes. At the Ohio High School Athletic Association, our student athletes are going pro at being coachable, a good student, responsible, dependable, respectful. I'm going pro at being a good student, a good student, a good teammate, responsible. I'm going pro at being coachable, a good student, dependable, a good teammate. Representing my school. I'm going pro at being a good student. A good student. Responsible. Let's go pro at respecting the game. Respect 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 the game. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Ohio. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com.
The year was 1907. The Cubs won the World Series and the Ford Model R hit the assembly line. While here in Ohio, school administrators came together to form the Ohio High School Athletic Association. One thing that hasn't changed since 1907 is the dedication of the OHSAA to education-based athletics in Ohio. School sports teach responsibility, sportsmanship, and life lessons that stay with students long after their playing days are over. The OHSAA seeks to prepare students not for the next level of sport, but for the next level of life. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late night bus ride home after a hard fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine. Even bigger vocals. The 1980 hit will surely get you moving. Here is another one, Bites of Dust.
pulls on a rock and roll performance tonight. The band is going to be playing one of Rock's most timeless songs, which was popular upon its release in 1981, even made its way back to the mainstream with the TV show Glee, featuring soloist Matt Sheridan on the alto sax, Jake Fisher on mellophone. Here is Don't Stop Believing. marching band under the direction of Mr. David Geisler.
business being out there. You know, I'm a person too. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Ohio. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. The year was 1907. The Cubs won the World Series and the Ford Model R hit the assembly line. While here in Ohio, school administrators came together to form the Ohio High School Athletic Association. One thing that hasn't changed since 1907 is the dedication of the OHSAA to education-based athletics in Ohio. School sports teach responsibility, sportsmanship, and life lessons that stay with students long after their playing days are over. The OHSAA seeks to prepare students not for the next level of sport, but for the next level of life. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late night bus ride home after a hard fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine if it never happened at all. School sports need your help. With budgets getting tighter, it's more than the games that are on the line. It's all the traditions, the community pride, the culture of your hometown high school, plus all those memories that are on the line too. What can you do? It's simple. Buy a ticket when you can. Go to a game. Take the whole family. Let's do everything we can to keep those cherished school sports memories alive. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Our mission at the OHSAA is to serve our member schools and enrich interscholastic opportunities for students. To run quality postseason tournaments. To work with the bylaws that our member schools have voted into place. To support our officials. That's our mission every day at the Ohio High School Athletic Association. To serve. To serve. To serve. Open House. Register online and come see how you can fit in and stand out at Hartley.
Bishop Hartley will host the 2023 Open House on Thursday, November 9th. Join us from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. for a chance to hear from our principal, meet students, teachers, and coaches, learn about our house system, take campus tours, and see what amazing programs and facilities we offer our students. The Bishop Hartley Open House, Thursday, November 9th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And welcome back, fans, to the second round of the playoffs. Bishop Hartley hosting the St. Clairsville Red Devils. Hartley leading 14 to 7 after an exciting, hard fought first half. We've got just a few minutes left before we get the second half underway. My, my name is Ryan Dietrich, and I'm alongside Randall Sampson here on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Almo Sports. And here's a quick look at the first half. St started off by Dino Burke, the star running back from the Red Devils, who made a huge impact in the first quarter and a half. And here's the first strike of the game. The Red Devils long pass to number 13, Cole Thoburn, wide open down the left side, but it was mostly Bishop Hartley after that. Bryson Winbush, there he is, the coyote like you always like to talk about. Made a big impact. We're going to see his huge run here in a second. But it was a, like we talked about and anticipated. Here we go. Both teams like to run the ball. Both teams do that effectively. That requires physicality up front on both sides, and that's what we've seen. And that really broke things open for the Hartley Hawks in the middle of the first quarter, and it was all downhill after that. Robert Lathan, Jr., making a big impact, a little shiftiness, and finds that crease. The big run, almost a touchdown, but saved by Thoburn there. The speedster tackled at the five. And the Bishop Hartley, um, there was a little kerfuffle on that play as I guess the sideline ran out there thinking he was going to score. But Lathan followed it up anyway with some... Nice blocking from his squad in front. Jumps over a guy into the corner of the pylon. And so there's your first three touchdowns of the first half. 14 to 21. Bishop Hartley leads, like I said. And there was a good look through the, through the players of the near interception from Donovan Tucker to close out the first half. Made a good play on a pass breakup. He couldn't come away with it. But, like I said, it's, it's been well fought. We did have... The big injury to the star running back for the Red Devils, Dino Burke. We'll wait to see if he comes out here in the second half. We'll find out what his status is. Hartley Hawks are out on the field, and we're about to see the Red Devils take the field coming out of the locker room here into the second half. Randall, what are we looking for? Hey, and I'm looking at uh, uh, Dino Burke. Uh, when he got off the sideline there, I mean, he had zero pressure on his right leg. Um, they were holding him, hopping him off. So that's tough for a running back to get, you know, recovery from that, come back in and make that cut. Um, but I tell you what, St. Clairsville came out swinging. They are a lot more physical, a um, lot more athletic, a lot more uh, limber than uh, we would expect them to be this deep into the playoffs. Uh, but once again, they're 9-2 they're and two for a reason. They have the ability to play. Um, so they are not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. It's still a tight game, um, and I look forward to both teams getting back on track. And what I liked about St. Clairsville, they didn't panic at all. They were down 14-7 going into halftime. They had the ball. They didn't press. They didn't panic. Uh, they got a new running back in, which is their corner, uh, and he's a, he's a heck of an athlete. Uh, I do believe it's uh, Gavin Schoolcraft, Schoolcraft correct? Yeah. yeah. So he's an 11th grader, good-looking kid, uh, pretty shifty, you know, 5'8", 170 kind of kid. They moved him from wide receiver to running back. But there's a reason why he's second-team running back. When you have an elite, elite runner like they have, a kid that's had over 1,400 yards rushing with, yep. uh, you know, over 20-some touchdowns, I'm sure, yep. uh, that's the kid that you really are going to miss, and you have to figure out how to replace him in that kind of yardage in the second half. And, I, and I'm looking at some stats to that. You know, Dino Burke, obviously 156 attempts through the season. But Gavin Schoolcraft has carried it 60 times for 496. And then Ollie Muley, who we haven't seen yet, he's got 42 attempts on the season for 522 yards mm. and four TDs as well. So Ollie Muley is number 11. He's a sophomore, 5'7", 140. Um, so I was curious if we are going to see him there late in the second quarter. We haven't yet, but... 
just another weapon, you know, to keep an eye out for yeah. to pair with Gavin Schoolcraft as the Red Devils look to make some adjustments here in this second half down seven. Well, that's not bad when you have uh, your number two and number three yeah. running back have 900 yards between them. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a good problem to have, uh, as they would say. But I'm really looking forward to figuring out how Hartley will adjust to the physicality of their defense. They're very aggressive. All righty. Team's taking the sidelines. Bishop Hartley will receive the ball to begin the second half. Remember, they deferred. Red Devils got the start. And we're just getting ready here. Officials at the center. Team's hiding the huddle and in. Let's go to the sideline to our sideline reporter, Rashawn and Coach Birchfield. All right, apologize for the mix up on the microphone there, but we'll go right back where we're going. A minute 30 remaining here just before the second half gets underway. <laughs> and there we go. Wishing Coach Birchfield the best of luck. Apologies about that, folks. A little technical okay. difficulties. And that now, now in what I, I would hope that our camera crew can zoom in on the ref with the amazing <laughs> sideburns and chops. I mean, they're all the way down to his jawline, I do believe. Uh, so if we ever get a shot of that official's chops, and they're thick too. An excellent squad ref so far tonight. A couple of miss marks on the Hartley side, maybe. Randall, I know you thought Lathan got a couple yards on one of those, but all in all, like I said, physical game. We've got our hands full here in the second half. It's going to be an exciting one. The stands are packed on both sides. There's quite a big Red Devil presence on those far away stands. And, of course, a lot of the Hartley students have carried in the Halloween tradition. There's a banana down there, I see. But a good luck at the home crowd of the Bishop Hartley fans always supporting their local team. Yeah, there's good support here from both sides. And uh, St. Clairsville was here early, and they were packed in. And the kids are, you know, up in the pit getting ready to get <laughs> back into it after they got some hot dogs and popcorn and, and uh, sodas down at the concession stand. And we're getting ready to start the second half kickoff, and I think it's going to be just as exciting of a second half as it was the first half. And once again, my, my look for is Donovan uh, Davis in the middle, number 76, the big junkyard dog, call him JYD. His energy transfers directly into that defense. And when he gets back into that triple, I, uh, a triple beef stack, and he is lined up in there as a fullback, and he is just going, trying to eat somebody up, uh, so we really want to see how Hartley responds after this half and what St. Clairsville does uh, encounter in this chess match. Well, let's not wait any longer. There's the whistle. McKenna Booth to kick. It's the boot. Low line drive covered at the 30 and smartly just down on testing, the far testing, side. Testing, testing, Mike check. One, two, one, two. That was Joey Wooten making another heads up play. Bishop Hartley Hawks take the field for their first possession of the second half. Ryan Perry, the wideout, split near side. Matt Gaelic under center. Motion behind him, handoff. And a good tackle. Again, that was Schoolcraft getting in on both sides of the action here. Stops his man at the line of scrimmage. No gain, gain of one on the play. Well, St. Clairsville has made some adjustments to their defense as well. So they're playing a two deep. Uh, they started out with a two deep. Both safeties are, are back pretty far because they want to respect that quick little slant. Second at nine, Robert Lathan up the middle. Tackled from behind by Kyle Rankin. Gain of four yards on the play up to the 35. And that's exactly what Hartley wants right there. They want man-on-man, -man, the ability to, my man's going to beat your man, and we're going to get about four yards and let our big running back just bulldoze his way through and carry somebody for another two yards. Yeah, get tackled forward, get an extra yard or two. Third and five. Joey Zhang in motion behind the right guard. Galix checks his man. 
Toss to the right, intercepted. That's Schoolcraft again. Causing a disruption on the pass, but luckily recovered by the Hawks. A big loss on the play, but I think that was Joey Zhang saving it and recovering. That's going to bring up a long fourth and 15. And Schoolcraft comes right here off the edge on the corner. It was a toss sweep to the boundary, so that's good scouting. So they know what's coming to the boundary, and he just jumped on it right away. Uh, he cut right in front of Joey Wooten's face. Joey had to block out. He had a fan out, so it was just a mismatch. Bishop Hartley to punt. Lands about midfield. Down at the 46, and we're going to throw it down to the sideline reporter, Rashawn. So I had a time to talk to Coach Birchfield, and he was playing some of the adjustments that he made coming into this half. And he was saying, hey, we got to stop the, the silly penalties. We got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Stop making these mistakes. Stop making some of the mistakes that they've been made. Focus on the game. Focus on what we got to do and win this game and finish strong. That was some of the adjustments you made. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks, for Sean, for that little bit of information. In chatting with Coach Birchfield, we always appreciate that. Got to stop the small penalties as the Red Devils run it up the middle on first down. Gain a two on the play. And both of these teams are doing the exact same thing as, as far as offense is concerned. You want to run up the middle, give those body blows, body blows, and hopefully start sucking that defense up, defense up so you can go over the top. And this has been their play calls. Let's first down, let's run it. Second down, let's try to either run a screen or a test the outside. And that's how they scored their first touchdown. They just, you know, up the middle, and then they ran it. Uh, they uh, had a pass on the outside streak. Schaefer checks the sideline, got the call in the shotgun. Two wide receivers, man in motion. Drops back, looks to his right. Goes to Thoburn up and over the top. Great break up there by Fidelis Amboja. You can see he's pumped. Good coverage. And Fidelis said, hey, I saw this first half on the other side. You're not going to get me. And this is the exact same play where they get you running in the middle. Now they're going on that outside to test you to see if your cornerbacks have strung up a little, uh, snuck up a little bit. And he stuck right with it, went to the high point of the ball. Brings up third down and eight. Red Devils on the substitution. Schaefer in the shotgun. Schoolcraft behind him. Hartley fans making some noise. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Running towards the right sideline, closed out nicely by the defense. A gain of a few yards, he'll be short of the first down. And that Hartley speed on the perimeter, on the perimeter really comes crashing down. Uh, you're the quarterback, you're rolling out, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I got some room here. I think I'm going to get this first down. And all of a sudden, three guys show up out of nowhere. Um, and this is where you see this just speed coming down at you. Yep, heads up play by Jay Zhang, sophomore linebacker. And then Malik Tufts making a good play again from the end there. Short side of the field, forcing the man out of bounds. Fourth and six. Red Devils in punt formation. Good kick, lands about the 15-yard line, takes a nice kick towards the end zone, rolls out of bounds. They're going to mark it at the Bishop Hartley 7-yard line. Pinning them deep, and you mentioned it earlier, a field position battle, and the Red Devils have done a good job pinning Bishop Hartley deep in their own zone. And this is playoff football in November in Ohio. It's field position ball control kind of game uh, where both teams are running the ball. Uh, both teams are testing each other on the perimeter a little bit, but you don't want to give up the big plays. So now you have to flip the field, make the other team go 95 for the score, or maybe even go 70, 80 for a uh, field goal. And after the penalty on the play, knocks him back to the three and a half yard line. The goal line offense formation right here. Tight spreads Gaelic under center. Once, well, you have the shadow there. I mean, it's, it's tough. You're right there at the three-yard line. 
Makes a little motion out of it. Resets under center. Here we go. First and 10. And a flag on the play. Blown dead. Going to be a false start on the offense. And you can only move it back a yard and a half. There's the signal from the ref. And this is what Coach Burchfield was talking about coming out of halftime with our sideline reporter. Uh, cutting down on the, on the penalties and silly mistakes. They just had two back-to-back -back penalties. Now they're at the one-yard line trying to go 99 yards. Yeah, starting at the seven-yard line is hard enough. Now we're first and 11 from the one. Handoff, Latham left side, a little room to breathe. Gets to the left side across the five-yard line to the six. Now it looks like they'll mark it at the five. Looks like he was forced out of bounds by number 15, Drew Gaspar. And it seems like every time he runs the ball, they always mark it one yard back. <laughs> it's about the third instance we've seen, but play through adversity, we're just gonna button down. Second and nine, deep in their own territory. Hartley running a bunch formation again. Gaelic under center. And before we see second down, timeout Bishop Hartley on the field, their first of the half. Discover the rhythm of any occasion with Yamo Media DJs. Whether it's a wedding, corporate event, or a casual party, Yamo Media promises an unforgettable atmosphere, seamless transitions, customized playlists, dance lights, and pure energy can be expected when you hire Yamo Media to DJ your event. For more information, visit yamomedia.com and click on DJ Services under the Services tab. Yamo Media, achieve more. Well, any, anytime you're trying to have a good party and a, a great event, it's always difficult to find quality people. And seeing these guys work uh, behind us backstage, the hard work they put in, this is definitely a, a type of crew and organization you want with you. Absolutely. Big shout out to the Yamo Sports production team, as always, for putting on another great broadcast here. And finally, second down and nine after that quick timeout, Gaelic. Gets under center, pulls back, checks the line. All right, recenter. Motions his man. And it's an inside handoff just across the line of scrimmage. A little bully ball. Maybe a gain of two on the play. Another conservative call from Birchfield. He wants a chess match up there, so he's giving the quarterback an option. Uh, and they have to make the adjustments on the line because they just basically ran a trap. They just have to figure out what side uh, where they can get some wiggle room in the middle. Yep, nothing fancy, just the inside counter. A couple yards. One thing he's doing, though, is milking the clock. He's got a seven-point lead. This is playoff football. He knows what he's doing. Out of the shotgun, third and six. Gaelic Comes a corner blitz. And Winbush gets around his man, able to stay on top, gets the first down. On the good slant towards the sideline, Bryson Winbush, a big catch for the first down. And that brings a little bit of life to this Bishop Hartley crowd. Well, I'll tell you what, that is a big time throw by a quarterback, because most quarterbacks, even in college, can't do this where you got a blitz coming, and the goal is to throw where the blitz is coming from. That means you got one-on-one -on -one out there, and the uh, quarterback was able to recognize that. That is a high football IQ from that quarterback. Yeah, and a good little chip block there by Rory Ralston, the halfback, doing his job pass blocking as well. First and 10 from their own 16-yard line. Under center, it's a handoff. Rory Ralston cuts it back across the 20-yard line to the 22. Big gain on first down. And it's a very patient game here. We're, we're taking about six yards, seven yards at a clip. Uh, which is exactly what Burchfield wants. Uh, offensive line is starting to get in the groove again. A nice little counter to slow down uh, that slow down that uh, defense. And uh, number 34 just got pancaked there by, I believe, Joey Wooten. Yeah, that's Brennan Stout. He's been making a big impact on the defensive end for the Red Devils. But every once in a while, he'll run into Joey Wooten. Second and four. There we go, Robert Lathan. 
Breaks the tackle, breaks another one, stays on his feet out across the 40 yard line. And there's a big extra push from Robert Lathan Jr. Now Robert Lathan lands at the 42 yard line and the ball is spotted at the 39. <laughs> you're, hey, you're not wrong. No, this is like the fourth time that they've done this. So let's take a look at Robert here. So he's just turning in the middle, keeping those legs moving. Uh, he does that uh, running back drill where you put your hand down and you keep going. And he has pushed all the way past the 40, lands at the 42, and the ball is at the tip of the 40. First and 10 from the 40-yard line for the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Moving in motion, Gaelic drops back, airs it out deep. He's got a man. Had a step on him, but how about Cole Thoburn with the big breakup on the play, saving a huge gain. Great defensive effort there from Thoburn. And I absolutely love that call. So you've got it, you've got a good rhythm on the run game. That's now you have them all sucked up. And you're going deep and stretching the field, letting them respect that deep ball. What a great ball. That's a great ball by that quarterback. But even better play by that defensive back to go in with the right hand and punch it in. So you can tell these kids are uh, well coached, great technique. This is why this is such a good battle. Second 10 handoff counter on the inside. It's Winbush again on that same play that busted him for a big touchdown in the first, and there we go. A little late flag on the play, some extracurriculars going on. And you'll get a round of applause from the Bishop Hartley crowd. As it looks like we've got, we'll wait for the penalty call from the ref. All right, let's hear what Chops has to say here as the official. Yeah, it looked like a late hit for sure, and you'll see it here just after the pile gets in there. Right there, yeah. Yeah, you can't clean off the pile. That's, that's one of the things that has been outlawed over time, right? It used to be when we were younger 20, 20 30 years ago, uh, even playing in college, the rule was either get in the pile or get away from the pile because yep. somebody's coming to clean up. Yep. And that, yeah, saves a lot of injuries is why those rules are in protection. Absolutely. And a big first and 10 here from inside the 40. Another trap up the middle. I think that was Lathan on the carry. Yes, it was. Once again, looks like a gain of two yards on the play. A slow, methodical drive here. Chewing up some valuable clock time with a seven-point lead. Coach Birchfield moving the ball effectively here early in the third quarter. And I'm yet to see Hartley come back out and make St. Clairsville run laterally. Uh, when they were chasing sideline to sideline, that's when Hartley was really effective with them. But these body blows are really, really starting to take some wind out of them. Perry in motion, jet sweep around the left side, sneaks around one man, finds the sideline, cuts back inside and down across the 20 yard line. Ryan Perry on a big carry there. Uh, you, ju you just said that. Yes, these inside body blows, uh, we got a flag on the play here, something that's the temptation on the outside. You got, you got hands moving, right? We'll see, nothing, no, doesn't look like anything from the blockers. Looked like cl pretty clean protection. See if there's maybe a late hit on the play. Block below the waist, number 86. That's Brendan Larratt or down on the left side. Just, yeah, unfortunate, a little out of position there. And that'll bring the big play back. Looks like he's... Oh, no. Yeah. He didn't even block anybody. He fell down and rolled. That's he true. didn't even block anybody. He didn't touch anybody. And they call that a block below the waist. That is um, not a good call. Well, play through it. Second and 23. Pump fakes to the right. Ryan Perry just straight drops it. Looking downfield before he caught the ball. That'll bring up a really long third and 22. Kind of putting a halt on that good drive they had going. Well, it's, it's a shame when officials call games like this that either, either side, both sides, you cannot 
allow your calls to take away from a team. And that's what you're doing. You're affecting the game uh, by your bad calls on both sides. Well, now was one, you know, he said 86. Maybe he meant 76. Maybe it was on Big Donovan Davis on the inside. Hard to tell from that replay. But either way. Yeah. And maybe uh, he meant 66 in there. Donovan's on the sideline, so maybe he meant 66, right? And uh, who's that? Six? That's not yeah, Zach Parker. Yeah. That's Blake. Either way, third and 22. And, man, Bishop Hartley cannot get things together. And this is what Coach Birchfield mentioned at halftime, cutting out those silly little penalties. And here's a couple of them killing the drive, backing them up to their own 42. Third and a mile. Gaelic under center. Jet sweep around the end. It was almost a reverse. They sniffed that out. Good work by Brennan Stout. Getting in the backfield, disrupting that. Winbush, a loss of about three on the play. So with two flags there, and you can see this jet sweep's coming and the corner's coming on. Uh, and this is good scouting right here. You got double uh, DBs coming down, crashing. And you got to hold on to the ball. Don't stick it out there. He, but here you are with, with Hartley with two penalties, and you were in scoring position, if not just a field goal, and you just gave up 40 yards. Back to punt, a little wobbly. Not fair caught, risky catch at the, thir at the 30. Tackled at the 28. Thoburn loss of a couple on the return. The Red Devils are going to take over with 347 to play from the 27-yard line. And you could hear it. Some of those penalties breathe a little life back into the Red Devils' sideline. And it's flattened things out over here on the Hawks' side. And sophomore uh, Leron Golden was in there on that tackle. Uh, like to see those kids come out on special teams and do their job. Yeah, great coverage on that punt. Absolutely. St. Clairsville has been fairly disciplined. I mean, they had a 15-yard uh, late hit on that pile, but both sides are, are starting to move the ball. All right, handoff up the right side. Schoolcraft showing his moves across the 35. Going to be enough for a first down. Gain of 11 on the play. And Schoolcraft got a little dinged up there, too. He's trying to run it off a little bit. And now they're going pace. Uh, they're, they're picking up the pace a little bit. You know, they were very methodical at the beginning, but now they're really starting to go into a little bit of pace into a hurry-up offense to kind of catch Hartley off guard here. Yep, a good change in the game plan for the Red Devils. Second and six. And I'm going to keep an eye on number 10, Schoolcraft. He, it looks like his left leg is dinged up there. He got nicked up a little bit on that left leg. Yeah, you can see him stretching it out a little. Up the middle again, going back to their man. Big pile. Traffic jam, gain of about two, gain of one on the play. That'll bring up third and five. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, there is a party in the middle with Griffin Fogel and the junkyard dog, JYD, uh, number 76. So 63 and 76, they are battling old school style in there. It is a battle royale, and it is beef against beef, big guy against big guy, trying to figure out who is the top dog in this uh, offense and defensive line. All right, a big third and four for St. Clairsville. Pay for the shotgun, finds a man wide open in the middle. A big throw and catch, Tyson Pastor on the play. The junior showing the big hands over the middle. And kind of got his bell rung there on the tackle. A quick shift in personnel, and the Red Devils are already at the line. You mentioned it, pushing the pace of play. Here we go. Yeah, and they're getting their guys in and out, uh, getting their packages in and out uh, that they need, and they're getting set and see what happens here. This is their running package. Ooh. J. Y. D. In the middle, the junkyard dog got the best of them that time. And I'm telling you, number 63 and 76 are battling in the middle. And it doesn't get much better than that. There's Rory 
just coming in as a yep. submarine, taking care of business. Yeah, you saw Donovan wrapped him up, and Rory came in and finished it off. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line. Again, that same formation. Schaefer in the bunch, Pastor near side, fakes the handoff, cuts back at the line of scrimmage again. Traffic jam. There you go, the big boys in the middle doing their business. He knows his job and he's doing it. That's Donovan Davis all night long. So what happened was three plays before this, Donovan Davis got it handed to him, so he's on the ground getting pancaked, and then he turns on the dog switch. So now he's feeling some kind of way, and he's going, and the defense is starting to feed off of it too. That's what you need on that side of the ball. Somebody to get the boys going. The crowd is loud. Third and 10 here from Jack Ryan Field. Schaefer drops back, eyes downfield. Dangerous pass over the middle. A lot of blue helmets there, and it's broken up. That looks like Fidelis Emoja was the nearest man getting his hand on it. When you're looking at an empty set, and so they had uh, four wides getting out there running verticals, and that ball went through about four sets of hands. Two defensive back uh, in the front, one receiver in the middle, and then two at the very back end. Yeah, you can see the look from the quick replay there. Good coverage from the secondary of the Hawks. Fourth and 10. Looks like Booth back to punt from the 45. Big high kick. Fielded at the 11, Joey Wooten fair catch. Or excuse me, Ryan Perry with the fair catch. And this is part of the game. This is the chess match, right? So flipping the field, field position, ball control, let the punt be your yep. ally. And the drive before this, the possession before this, Hartley had the reverse before the penalty all the way down at the 25-yard line. And then they get backed up by penalties, had the punt do the defensive stand. Now they're all the way back at the 10, so they have to go 90 again. Yep, pin deep they are. 17 seconds remaining here in the third. Gaelic under center, two wide receivers, one in motion. And off Robert Lathan got some room, broken one, two tackles near the 30 yard line, a gain of 15 on the play. And Lathan got a little dinged up there on the tackle. Looks like he twisted a, a ankle or something. Uh, on that tackle, he got twisted around going down. Let's take a look at this replay. See if we can catch it here right at the end. He gets tackled, gets twisted down. Yeah, training staff checking on Robert Lathan here. Again, teams will take a knee for him. Hopefully he's just a little shaken up on the play, but there's 10 seconds left here in the third quarter. The Bishop Hartley Hawks will be facing first and 10. And yeah, you said it once again, starting deep from their own Terry. That was a great pump from the Red Devils. That was good 40 yards, nice hang time. Um, and Ryan Perry doing a good job, heads up. Call the fair catch, don't let it roll any deeper. Uh, but still, 90, you know, 90 yards to go is no short order. Yeah, and this is, this is just straight field position ball ball control November type of football. Uh, great to see Robert get up on his own. Um, and he's not limping or gimping at all, so it looks like something just got twisted up a little bit, and he seems like he's okay. Um, last time we saw a running back, uh, RB1 going down for St. Clair's, well, he couldn't put any pressure on, on his leg at all. Uh, so this is a good sign for Hartley's running back as the docs continue to check him out. Yep. Yeah, a little shaken up. Um... You know, Harold get caught in the helmet, but he's going to chill on the sideline for a minute. Yeah. And they've got some backups that can do it. Obviously, we've seen Winbush in action. Yeah. He's ready to go. We haven't seen. Shoemate. Um, yeah, we haven't seen Shoemate at all yet. Well, and this is, uh, this, is where the, this is where the bye week comes in, right? So, Shoemate had last week off, and then he didn't play against St. Charles, and he got hurt against Kip. Okay. So kind of nicked up his ankle, got hurt. So he got actually two and a half, three weeks to heal back up. And so when you're this deep at running back for Hartley, yep. that is essential. So we, I just want to see how Hartley responds here because Shoemate's a, a totally different back. Uh, so you have this thunder and lightning kind of combination between the two. And Shoemate's, 
And Shoemate's a really uh, 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 lightning kind of back. So earlier we talked about, hey, where are you watching the game? And here we are, Rick <laughs> Schubert down in Florida. South Florida down on the beach. Palm trees in the background. Lights are on. Uh, shorts and T-shirt lounging, watching the Bishop Hartley game. Hartley alumni are all over the world watching the game. And uh, we love having Rick on. Uh, he's a great, great alum here at Hartley. Played football back in the day and uh, had a flowing lock of hair when he played. And uh, now, you know, he's, he's retired and down in South Florida living his best life. So uh, thanks for sending that picture up our way as you are watching the game, my friend. Love to see that shot from Rick down in Florida. All right. And before we get things underway, flag on the play. And there you have it. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Back it up a little. First and 15 to start off the fourth quarter. We've got 12 minutes to play. Bishop Hartley with a seven-point lead. Penalties are, are what's keeping St. Clairsville in this game. Uh, Hartley's moving the ball, but then Hartley gets penalties, and it just brings it all the way back again. And Bush in motion, fakes the toss. Looking to his right. In and out of the hands of Bryson Winbush. Just got his eyes downfield before he made the catch in here. Yeah, shout out to all the people watching around. I see we've got some in the chat. West Virginia, Des Moines, Iowa. Anchorage, Alaska. Go Devils. How about that? Somebody from up in Alaska. Surfside Beach, South Carolina. David in Jacksonville. John in OKC. Allen in Blairsville. Man, I like to see that. People all over the yeah. nation. And I love seeing that St. Clairsville is giving a shout out from Alaska. Huh? Yeah. St. Clairsville people are loving their football. They're following their team. They're watching. That is exciting. That is awesome. Yep. Shane in Scottsdale. Richard in Fort Myers. Jordan in Louisiana. Love it. People all over the place. And they're getting a, a show tonight because we're watching some elite talent uh, here unfolding in front of our eyes. In motion, fakes the toss, hand up right up the gut. And a big gain on the play from Bishop Hartley. And there he is. You were talking about it. That's number seven, Aaron Shoemate, getting in, switching things up. So his ankle's feeling a little bit better, but you can still see it, that same dynamicism. Yeah, and, and Shoemate's got, he's got that move. He's got a little bit more wiggle in the hips. Uh, he's a little bit more explosive. He's not as methodical as, as the big fella, right? Yep. So he explodes through the, through the hole, and then he really hits you at the end. Third and seven. Great pass from Gaelic to find his man down the right side. Ryan Perry for a Bishop Hartley first down. So here's Hartley once again, making some good moves, good protection on the outside. You got to respect the play action pass from Hartley. And that's what those body blows in the middle do for you, right? It buys you time as the quarterback on the outside. You can set your feet, throw it <laughs> right there at the um, sideline. But here's where Hartley falters. Starting to drive. Can they finish? Yeah, inside the 50-yard line from the 46, first and 10. Motion again before the snap. Fumbles it a little bit. Gaelic maintains control, though, as he's wrapped up by four Red Devils. Almost a catastrophe for the Hawks at midfield. But he recovers the snap and is able to go down. And you can see the reaction from the young QB right there. He knows it. He's just got to settle down a little bit. And it's fundamentals, one thing at a time. And I like to see on the film, you know, afterwards, uh, talk to Coach Birch and figure out how many second and 15, second and 14 plays did you have in this game? Because it's either somebody's jumping off sides or you get something like this. Yep. All right, inside the 10-minute mark. One possession game at midfield, second and 13. And here we go again. Another penalty blows the play dead. 
Wow, delay a game penalty on the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Not what Coach Birchfield wants to see. Backing them up five yards. That's going to bring up second and 18. All things looking good for the Red Devils right now. <clears throat> hey, Red Devils don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, hey, we'll take this. Go ahead and get a first down because we know you'll be in second and 15 and eventually second and 20. All right, second and 18. Here we go again. Under center, fakes the handoff, looks deep. He's got a man. He's got some space. Ryan Perry just out of his fingertips. Can't come down with it. They had the opportunity and just missed it. Good play call from Birchfield. I like the aggression. Yeah, and you have to go deep with something like this, and you have a max protection, one-man route towards the sideline, so it's a safe pass just off of the fingertips as he got behind two defenders. And yeah, Gaelic's got a great arm. That was a good-looking pass, high arcing, just, just missed him by three inches. All right, third and 18. Bishop Hartley out of the shotgun now. Handoff inside. Big tackle at the line of scrimmage. Mickey Balgo, I haven't mentioned his aim yet. The big defensive end wrecking things on the inside. Good stop by the Red Devils. Brings up a long fourth down for Bishop Hartley. Yep, Shoemate. Little counter again. Yep. Well, and this is, this is what Hartley has done all night long. Get a great drive, and then you stall out. Uh, had the little fumble there. Yep. And then the coaches aren't getting plays in fast enough, so you get another five-yard delay. Now we have to see, can you flip the field? and make sure your special teams can pin them down deep. Great punt, and it's getting a Hartley Hawks bounce as it trickles inside the five-yard line. I believe that's Ryan Perry doing the good work on the punting side of it. After just missing that catch, he turns around as the punter and knocks one down there. Yep, pins him deep. All right, this is what the Hawks can ask for. That brings a little life to the crowd. They had gone kind of quiet after all those penalties. And a good shot of the sideline there. The coaching staff from Bishop Hartley. All right, just inside of nine minutes. They've got the full length of the field, all 98 yards, 99 maybe. So you got to go 99 yards. Will Big Donovan Davis in the middle get that defense pumped up? Or will Fogel number 63 on the other side get his lineman going? So this is the battle that we've been uh, watching all night long, and it's up in the trenches. And we see some movement up front. Yep, false start on the play. And if you had to have a false start in a situation, this isn't a bad one. Yeah, that's... Yep, can't back him up any further. So just repeat first down. Yeah, move back half an inch. And so you got one receiver down, two receivers out. And are you just trying to run a quarterback sneak here, just kind of push the pile a little bit, or are you handing it off, risking it? Or maybe you go for the fly pass. We'll see what, what they have up their sleeve. All right, the Red Devils check their sheets. Goal line formation. Schaefer's in the shotgun. Drops back, and he's sacked in the end zone. Fumble, Fumble. recovered Fumble. by Joey Touchdown. Moon. Oh, they gave him the, did they give him the, the safety we'll, instead of the touchdown? We'll wait to see if they're giving it a recovered in the end zone or if it fell out the back. Touchdown. Oh, safety. <laughs> safety. <laughs> With the fake. Chops. <laughs> Chops, the official, gave the fake. A little slow. But what a big play. That's Joey Wooten. Oh, excuse me, number eight. That's Denim Cook. Getting in on the defensive end of it. Yep, and this is super close because it's right at the back of the end zone. Oh, uh, so he went for it, fumbles, recovers. Did it recover out of bounds? Is the white, white stripe is out of bounds? Is that what they're saying? Well, the ball's down. 
and it recovers. I mean, he's in bounds on the recovery and rolls out. Right. But yeah, number nine, Joey Wooten there on the sack, just off the corner blitz. Schaefer didn't see it coming, and then on the recovery, Denim Cook, and it looks like he's on the blue turf inside the white stripe. I mean. He's on the turf, his knee is down, he has control, and, and then he rolls. That shot like. Right there, there it is, but we don't have, he big, has control. All right. Those big hands. But bang, bang, call, they rule it a safety on the field. Two points for Bishop Hartley. That makes it a two possession game at 16 to seven. And I would just like to say excellent work from our camera crew and our director. Um, getting a good look at those replays, the freeze frame, um, kind of a bang, bang call, but what a play by the defense of Bishop Hartley. The great pump by Ryan Perry, pin him at the one. And then Joey Wooten and Denim Cook getting it done for the safety. So here we go, St. Clairsville. We'll go to punt from the 20 yard line. That's the benefit of it. A punt lands Can't about 43. The there you go, recovered at just 41 yard line by Bishop Hartley. Gonna have good field position. And hey, there we go again, number nine, Joey Wooten. Good play from the hands team. Good starting field position, 840 to play. What a turn of events for the Bishop Hartley Hawks right there. And Joey Wooten's a big kid. I mean, he's this big 6'2", 200-pound kid that comes off that corner and really uh, is athletic and can get through some of that garbage as far as the offensive line and fight through any kind of running back. So he creates a lot of mismatches for folks. Um, but they just use him in different packages. And uh, sometimes he gets there and sometimes he doesn't, but this time he got there. All right, 16 to seven lead. The Bishop Hartley crowd is alive now. Gaelic pass to his left, Winbush cuts back and took a very hard hit near the sideline. Flag down on the play after a big pickup on the pass. A lot of calls from the fans here. They did not like that hit. Well, we're getting some, uh, some good blocking on the outside by the wide receivers. Uh, so I don't know if the hand slipped a little bit on the outside. Nope, wide receivers are, are blocking. And let's take a look at the hit here at the end. Helmet to helmet. As you can see, the, the helmets kind of crash together. Helmets flies over to the side. Kid gets up. Yeah, that. Yeah, Winbush pop right back up. Always a good thing, but tough to see the emotion like that. So the refs are conferring right now. I wish we decision. could zoom in on, the, on that ref. Look at those chops, man. I'm like... <laughs> I'm just admiring this guy. There he is. There we go. All right, there you have it, folks, holding on each side. And we're going to go quick to the sideline to our reporter, Rashawn, for an injury update. Okay, so we have an injury report on Robert Lathon. It looks like he's sitting on the sideline and he is done for the rest of the night. Um, we'll get more updates on what is the injury, but right now he is done for the rest of the night, for the rest of the game. That's a key loss because he's a key star for Bishop Hartley. So we'll see what's going on for the rest of the game. We got about eight minutes left. Back to you, Ryan. Thanks for the update, Rashawn. And yeah, Robert Lathan undressed. Over there on the sideline. And he, he's a big loss, but lurking yep. in the shadows, you got this kid, the shoe, hanging out all season long, spotting, getting in there. And you can see when he goes in, he's very shifty, and he can just ride the wave of those offensive linemen. So let's see if this change of pace really helps Hartley's uh, running game out. Second and two, and off up the middle. Frustrated that he didn't get just that extra inch. It's going to be Ralston getting in there. The fullback dive. But it should have been enough for the first down. Yeah, they're moving the chains. Yeah, they gave him the no, first down this time. No measurement on it. Ball at the 49-yard line just inside Red Devil territory. Seven and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Nine-point lead. Two possessions is the key there for the Bishop Hartley Hawks. First and 10, Joey Wooten. Motions into the backfield, under center. 
Gaelic tosses. Ooh, tough meet at the line. Might have been Stout getting in on the play. Big number 55, that's Perry Patron. Holding up the line for the Red Devils. No gain on the play. Going to be second and 10 again for the Hawks. And Hartley has to readjust their package based on the personnel. So this is not the running back that you can run to the boundary and get the pitch out to him, and he'll find some room and bulldoze, bulldoze his way through. You need to get the ball in his hands immediately and let him make the cut and go. Second nine under center. Gaelic checks back to the sideline, chewing up a little clock here. Sweep around Wooten with the speed, shakes once, breaks a man, and gets tackled ahead across the 25-yard line, down to the 22. Big gain on the end around there by Joey Wooten. Six foot, 200 pounds, and can fly like a gazelle. This kid has speed. He has a high football IQ. He can read very well. Uh, just come across in motion, just a simple play, and takes the jet sweep for a six foot, 200 pound kid. And once again, you got Shoemate out there helping to lead the block. Guys are keeping it clean. So guess what? It's a Hartley first down. St. Clairsville has to do nothing and see if Hartley implodes again over in, the next couple plays. And in on the tackle, familiar faces, Thoburn and Brennan Stout doing everything they can for that Red Devil defense. First and 10. Ox from the 27. Left side to the cross the 25 yard line, tackled at the 24. So this is probably the first play since the first half where Hartley has had a gain of plus 15 and the second play, they actually have a positive yard yeah. without a penalty. Yeah, that's, yep, following it up, keep running it. And they, yeah, they've got some momentum now, feeling it a little bit more. A nice little cut there from Shoemate, getting some action in. All right, same thing. That's Aaron Shoemate in the backfield for Robert Lathan in on the sideline. Under center handoff to Shoemate. Shakes one there on the tackle, met at the line. Brennan Stout again. And I like the way Shoemate hits the hole. He gets in there, he's very decisive. He hits the hole, gets in there. If he gets tackled, he goes down. He doesn't try to fight through, get the ball stripped out of his hand. Cause you're a new running back coming into this trying to get your rhythm. And so you don't want to do too much where the ball gets stripped uh, because you're not comfortable yet running the ball. You've been off for, for two and a half, three weeks now. So just getting back into the rhythm of it, he's doing a good job. All right, Gaelic saunters out there, taking his time as we get under five minutes here. You can see the ease of which they're playing, taking their time. Third and six, handoff, Winbush around the end. He's got some room on the right side. Cuts it up. Shakes a man, and it's a touchdown. Bishop Hartley, Bryson Winbush, his second of the night. It's the Coyote getting to the corner, but once again, Hartley has positive, and then they get back with negative. Got the flag on the play. We'll wait and see. A lot of boos from the crowd. We'll wait to see for the call. It looks like things are coming back. Let's see what Chops has to say. Didn't get a number on it. Couldn't tell who he said. His mic cut out, but holding on Bishop Hartley. That on the gate, the touchdown. Well, it's just, you know, straight stretch around the corner. And it looks like 51 got a touch, but it wasn't anything big. Five is there. Not much, nothing there, um, but, but they saw something. Yep. How about those move, open field moves from Winbush? Accelerating the end zone. Gaelic rolls to his left, hit as he throws. A little bit underthrown, but great effort by Winbush as he's on the ground. They're calling it a catch. Makes up the play on the next one. Bryson Winbush throwing catch from Matt Gaelic for a first down. All right, so. Right. The Coyote comes out, he stumbles a little bit, comes back and fights for the ball, gets his hands underneath it, and makes a clean catch. Great catch, and how about the strength and poise from Junior, <clears throat> excuse me, Matt Gaelic, steps up, 
a night. I mean, a little bit wobbly, but he got drilled as he threw that. I'm impressed by the kid. His poise all season long coming in as a new starter, and he's just worked his way through. This is why the guys up front, the guys in the locker room, all trust him. And, yeah, just a sophomore, he's done his job to earn it. Absolutely. Shoemate on the toss, back up the middle, drags the guy forward for a yard or two. It's like a positive play. Donovan Davis out there rubbing it in the face of the defense. We see the attitude and the positivity from the Hawks as we get under three. 38 left in the fourth. Nine-point game. Bishop Hartley smelling blood in the water. Well, Big JYD number 76 is saying to himself, hey, look, there's still time on this clock. And I don't know if this is my last high school football game, so I'm going to continue to eat. So I want to have some more pancakes. And so let's see if this transpires into the, to the rest of the game. All right, taking his time. It's back down up the right side. Big gain on the play for the Hartley Hawks there. Just a nice little run up the middle. So Brendan Umer, he's one of the kids that we have we took a look at earlier in the season, and he was that third team back, just trying to work his way through, and he's really grown all season long. He's finding the hole, being secure with the ball. But this kid, his grandfather, I know his grandfather, served in the U.S. Armed Forces, the greatest guy ever, and as ripped as you will see a grandpa ever be. <laughs> So he has a lot to kind of live up to here. All right, well, he's, he's an athlete then. He's got some lineage, and here he is. He's getting the attempt again from the six-yard line and bulldozes the man. Touchdown, Bishop Hartley. And for the first time all game, Hartley finishes a drive that's very methodical without penalties taking him back. Well... They scored once and got called back and a few plays later. The young man bulldozing his way into the end zone and there's a playoff highlight for you. Clenching this one for Bishop Hartley and all but doing it. And that's that off-season conditioning program, getting the kids strong, getting them fast. And this is the time of the year when you can see all that stuff transferring right uh, to the field. Connor Bjornsson with the... Extra point is up, and it's good. 23-7. to seven. Bishop Hartley leads with two and a half to go. And once again, I'd just like to thank everybody out there for tuning in. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. We appreciate all of you from across the country tuning in, watching the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Sports. Did you know that you can support Bishop Hartley and earn a tax credit on your Ohio income taxes for 2023? Visit emazroadscholar.org or scan the QR code to learn more about making a gift that turns your tax dollars into scholarships at Bishop Hartley today. And save the date for April 13th. There it is, the evening of excellence will be taking place once again with Can't Miss Prices, a wonderful catered meal, and much, much more. The Evening of Excellence is the place to be April 13th, 2024. Save the date as we get ready for the kickoff here. Honor Bjornsson boots one short. There's kind of a little dribbler across midfield to the 41 where the Red Devils will take over. And Randall, I know you're familiar with that Evening of Excellence. Uh, Evening of Excellence is absolutely great, and we love donating uh, to it, and we love it when people go and they bid, and we have this uh, package for Naples, Florida, so people can go bid. It's getting a little chilly out now. It's November, <laughs> and now people are starting to say, hey, I need to be somewhere where it's nice and warm, and the beauty about this whole thing is you can bid on the place, win the bid, go down to Naples, Florida, Drive 20 minutes north and go visit Rick. He's right there. <laughs> so you have a Hartley connection instantly built in. Or just invite Rick and say, hey, Rick, let's go down <laughs> to Marco down. Island and go hang out. The Hartley family is everywhere. As the Red Devils, a nice first down completion. A good throw and a catch there. Number 11, there's Ollie Muley, the sophomore, getting in on the play. 
Big pickup first down for St. Clairsville. Clock is running, trying to get some hurry up going. As they're down three possessions here with 2.15 remaining. All right, from the 45 yard line, first and 10. Brady Schaefer in the shotgun. Four wide receivers. Looks to his right at the sideline. Good hit out of bounds. Joey Wooten getting it done on the defensive end. Ollie Muley the target again on the catch. Incomplete pass, second and 10. So he had some time downfield, so that was a really, really great coverage by Hartley downfield. So you got to dump it off to your check down, and Joey Wooten's right there. So everybody on Hartley's defense played their role and did their job. Five wide receivers this time. Schaefer in the shotgun. Four-man rush. Pocket holds. Complete on the right. Ollie Muley, same play again. Just a nice little quick out to the sideline. Should bring up third and two. St. Clairsville is really working that sideline, getting the guys out of bounds. Make sure you stop the clock so you don't have to burn your timeouts. Yep. Uh, very methodical, and I, and I love the way they're coached. They don't panic. Very well-disciplined team. All right, Schaefer out of the shotgun. Five wide again, a little QB keeper. He's looking at the sideline, but too far to get there. A good pickup on the first down. Gets him to the 31-yard line. Good IQ by the quarterback. He's like, okay, I got the first down. I've got to get to the sideline. But then you have Rory eyeballing him, and he's all over the field tonight trying to get after him. Yep, if you had a little QB spy on the play to keep him from getting out of bounds, forcing St. Clairsville to burn a timeout. As they do, they'll have a first and 10. And I love this kind of camera shot where you're in the huddle with the coach. You can see the intensity. You can see everybody getting to where they need to get. Coach encouraging them. Kids are there listening, locked in, ready to go. And this has been the big thing. So I come out, talk to the team. And when we had our talk, the one thing that we talk about is lock in. This is it. You have no other choice but to lock in. Because if you don't lock in and one mistake, you're out of the playoffs. Your season is done. So every single play, every single moment, whether you're on the field or off the field, you have to lock in and be focused on this game. And they're prepped and ready. They know what's coming. First and 10, Red Devils got to get in the end zone quickly. They're going to the air again. Schaefer out of the shotgun, five wide receivers, short in the middle. Short little curl route to Colt Westlake. It's complete, but only a gain of a couple of yards, and that clock is going to keep on ticking. Donovan Davis a little slow to get up. JYD got dinged up. Looks like he uh, maybe twisted an ankle down at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, he'll be all right. He's able to limp off. Yeah. Schaefer back across the middle. Colt Westlake again finds a gap in the zone. Great ball by Brady Schaefer there on second down, and it's going to be a touchdown, St. Clairsville. And this is what you love about St. Clairsville. They are very disciplined, methodical. They don't panic. They run the play. They execute at a high level. Now, if you're Hartley, you have to be able to respond to that, and you have to know what's coming. Yep, and and they go. found that soft spot right in the middle. Yep, just over the head. And as a defensive back, you have to understand, I have 12 yards behind me. I can't let somebody behind me, so I have to stay as far back as the furthest receiver. All right, going for two here to make it a two-possession game, or a one-possession game, excuse me. Rolls to his right, Brady Schaefer across the top, and it's picked off. Fidelis and Moja sealing the game. So I want to see Fidelis if he goes down to the sideline and gets the turnover belt. And guess his picture? There's the Hartley, Hartley dog turnover <laughs> belt. He's going to put on the belt, pose on the sideline with his picture after celebrating with the X-Man. This is what the kids live for. There's the picture getting posted on social. He gets to send it out to mom and all his friends. <laughs> and that's a big play coming up from Fidelis Emoja. Because if they convert that, it makes an eight-point game. That's one possession. Instead, Bishop Hartley with a two-possession lead here with just a buck 17 left. Big play from the junior. Six foot tall, but man, he got up there. Good job tracking that receiver across the back of the end zone. Good vision. Yeah. 
He's a heck of an athlete. Player. You saw the closing speed, and he's one of those kids. They run track. They transfer that track speed directly onto the football field. That's the kind of stuff that Hartley has. So I'm wondering, do you put the hands team on? Are they going to do the onside kick here? You got a minute, some change left. Yep. Got to bring out the hands team earlier in the night. We saw a little, a little squib from the Red Devils. Not sure how intentional it was, uh, but they've definitely got that in their arsenal. There's, I mean, you're down two possessions with a buck 15. You got to try and get the ball back here. And it certainly looks like they're lining up that way. You're going to have McKenna Booth kind of giving this diagonal cross. You got the hands team out. They're all short. Big Other. play coming up right here. There is no tomorrow, so Sun has got to go for broke here. Squid left side across the midfield. Big hit. Good hands. I look to see who came down with it. Yep, number 86, Brendan Larratt. Big play. And that kid has soft hands for big tight end. Yep. Uh, he's one of the most underrated tight ends in the state, I think. And one of the things that I really like about this play is St. Clairsville executed at a high. I mean, you got the bounce. Yep. That's what you want, right? So you get the bounce, you give you guys a chance, but Hartley's guy got there. So both teams are well coached. And it's, that's why this matchup has been so critical. Yep, you make a very good point there. That onside kicks was very well executed. And on both sides, you know, big Brendan Laird just covering it. Doing a good job, get down. All right, under center. The handoff again, up the middle. Yeah, so this is just, uh, let's let's run the clock, let's let them burn their timeouts. Yep. All right, St. Clair, Clairsville's second timeout of the half. They've got one remaining. Pull the guys over the sideline, Coach Birchfield. Same thing, rinse and repeat, run the ball. And let's get out of here. The fans are making their way towards some of the sidelines, but mainly the students gather around there. They're waiting for the school <laughs> alma mater song, getting ready to go. That's right. Cheerleaders are excited. You know, everybody's on the sidelines making it happen. I see Jillian Reese down there as a cheerleader. She's getting ready. She's excited. Uh, you know, and this is all legacy kids that when you can call out the names. That's cool. That's because you went to school with their dads, their aunts, their cousins, their families. This is all legacy here at Hartley, and that's why there's so much pride. And I'm sure just like at St. Clairsville, there's a lot of yep. legacy, a lot of pride. That's why this matchup tonight has been so, so tight. You bet, and that's why we like having you on here with us, Randall, is you've got, you know, you went here. You're a graduate. You know. You know Bishop Hartley. And here we go. Ten minutes with 109 remaining. Second down and eight. Okay, he's gonna. All right, Gaelic goes under center, and here we go. Just little mistakes again. And this is it, right? So, yep. gotta clean it up. And there's first, first and ten, you make some progress. <laughs> second down, <laughs> you get, yep. you come back to where second and fourteen. Let's go. And yep. here's, here's the scary part. Sheridan just won 42 to zip tonight. All right. That's a, that's a runaway train. And Hartley has to go up against that monster next week. So you cannot have this level of, of, uh, of discourse on the offensive line, play calling, Ooh. flags. Come on. All right. And there it is. Another late flag. And another problem with that is that it stops the clock. All right, let's see what Chops has to say as he sorts this out for us. All right. Okay, once again, there was a little extra crew. You'll see it right here on the replay. Just a dive right up the middle. And things are getting chippy. I get it. It's cold. It's late. It's playoff football. But right there, yeah, 65 just, yep, kind of holding that man down. Yeah, and I think he's down at the bottom pile yeah. trying to give him the business. But I, I really thought he was on one knee kind of saying some Hail Marys with him and yep. maybe had some rosary time. <laughs> but the officials kind of misconstrued it as a little uh, roughing going on. They got. All right. Clock's ticking. 50 seconds remaining. First and 10. Yeah, at this point, I think right. Hartley just takes a knee. Yep. 
Uh, they'll call timeout if they want to, but the game for now is over. It doesn't look, yeah. All right, first and 10 right here, 30 seconds left, one snap, and this should do it. Takes the knee, and it doesn't look like Coach McLean's going to call a timeout. So that'll do it here, folks. Bishop Hartley's going to win this second-round playoff game 23-10 to over the St. Clairsville Red Devils. And for those still tuned in for next week's game, uh, stay tuned in to Yamo Media. You can follow us on our social medias at Yamo Media 614. Check the Bishop Hartley social medias as well. You can find them on Twitter. We will find out when the game was shared and will be scheduled. Um, but we should be back here next Friday night for Bishop Hartley playoff football. It'll be round three. Hopefully broadcast on Yamo Media. We will keep all of you folks updated. But thank you for tuning in. What a game, Randall. 23 to 13. A uh, great game from both sides. I was very impressed. And it's very physical, more physical than what Hartley probably expected when you see a team like this on film. Uh, so they're so athletic, you don't expect the physicality. And they were very, very physical. But I tell you what, 42 to zip tonight is the next opponent that Hartley has to uh, go battle. They have to come with their chin straps tightened up, no penalties, locked in and focused. Yeah, we'll see. There's the hugs and celebrations all around from the Bishop Hartley Hawks. Big congratulations to the squad here tonight as Bishop Hartley advances to the third round of the playoffs. And there's not too many uh, schools that can do this kind of stuff with, with uh, coming to the sidelines with the fans after winning a playoff game. Oh, sure. And just a quick little recap. The big plays of the game, and there it was early on. Dino Burke started to set the tone, that big play, and bang, bang. Two plays after that, Cole Thoburn wide open. He's got some wheels. He made a big impact all night, but all right, here we go. Sideline cam. A good look at the Bishop Hartley cheerleader squad. Our man Charles down in the trenches getting you the good looks. I like those Hartley helmets with the Hawks on them. All the guys earning those. The pit, keeping it alive. This is what it's about. High school football, the playoffs, and just keep it going. All they ask for is one more week, and yeah. you just do what you can to get there. Well, the ability to sing your school fight song yeah. uh, at your home field uh, at the very end of the season, last home game, because from now on out, you just go to location to play. Yep. This is how you add to, to, to the tradition. Oftentimes we say tradition doesn't graduate. This is what we mean. Tradition comes back every single year because you have an expectation to win games like this. You have an expectation to be in the playoffs and you have an expectation to get to what we call Birchfield Thursdays, to be one of the few teams to practice on Thursday for thank on Thanksgiving week. All right. So we've nicknamed that around here, Birchfield Thursdays. Okay. He's had the most Thursday practices <laughs> ever in Hartley history on Thanksgiving Day. All of the alumni from all over the country that happen to be in town on Thanksgiving cool. comes into the practice, watch the guys interact with them, and that's where you can see that tradition cool. starting to form. That's very cool. Well, we'll see if they can last that long all the way to Birchfield Thursday, and there's the man. Right there, Coach Birchfield showing what it's made of. They've got a good run. They advance. They improve to 10-2 and two on the season. And again, like we said, they'll face Sheridan next week. And it's good to see uh, uh, Lathan Ransom right. walking off uh, with his teammates on the field. He's not gimping. He's not injured at this, at this juncture that we can see. Uh, so the ability to get back in the training room, get some, uh, get some rehab going on, on whatever's ailing him. And the kids down there, they're excited. They're happy uh, uh, getting a win like this over a class act team that's tough, well-coached, and very organized. I think this was a good challenge for Bishop Hartley to see exactly what they have. And we're, hey, we're just thankful and grateful for St. Clairsville for traveling this well and hope that they have safe travels back. And even the St. Clairsville faithful all the way in Alaska that is amazing. So we are thankful for them as well. And uh, 
being up and, and watching the game. I don't know what time it is in Alaska, uh, how many hours behind they are, but I think it's the middle of the day. Yeah, and there's Robert Lathan right there, hopefully. Yeah, curious to see how he heals up over the next week. All these guys that are banged up, Donovan Davis there at the end. But one final shot, there it is. Coach Birchfield giving his boys the congratulations and some notes and some improvement, and here's what we're going to do. So for Yamo Sports and the Bishop Hartley Network, we thank all of you for tuning in out there. We greatly appreciate you spending your Friday nights with us here from Jack Ryan Field. Um, again, tune into our socials and keep posted for next week for Bishop Hartley's round three playoff game. For Ryan Dietrich and Randall Sampson and the Yamo Sports, thank you and have a good night.